in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed you hear what I'll be teaching you tonight. I came with a very heavy burden in my heart. And um, I trust that God will grant us grace. We began to share last week how that results are not a mistake. Results are not a coincidence. Every time you see results in the life of a person, whether spiritual results, whether financial results, whether intellectual results, they are governed by laws. One of the things that we have taught again and again in this house is after an encounter with the person of God. The next thing you have to understand are the principles that govern this kingdom that we live in. Are we together? The same way there are physical laws in our world and they are all responsible for different dimensions of results there is gravity there there's friction there are all kinds of forces at work whether you acknowledge their presence or not they are still at work the same way we have physical laws that's the same way we have spiritual laws and these laws are responsible for certain outcomes that we desire praise the lord one of the keys for productivity and results in this kingdom is to be able to connect your desires the spiritual laws that are responsible for the result you see most of us are aware of the existence of these principles but we do not know which one is responsible for what result. so we try them at random hoping and my assignment is to be able to guide your understanding that with accuracy and certainty and conviction you know what spiritual principle is responsible for what outcome are we together now and we started um, last week by talking about a few prices that we must pay I told us how that in the kingdom we receive by grace but then the Bible says it is true faith by grace available true faith becomes your experience anything that is not available by grace cannot become your testimony cannot be part of your life the grace of god is not just saving grace the grace of god available the kingdom that can only be provided for by christ is called grace now your faith is a summation of all the principles that you engage in that helps you to make that that has been available in christ to become your experience today salvation is by grace your faith makes it your experience healing is by grace your faith makes it your experience prosperity is by grace your faith makes it your experience so grace alone without engaging faith just leaves realities as potentials your life will never become that experience engaging these laws are a contribution your own alignment with god to make sure that these truths become your reality and i began to share with us a few things i've not found one person in my life who does not want to succeed now others may not admit others are outspoken about being successful others are religious about it but the truth about it is that every human being on earth of the 7.2 billion people you ask the arm robber why he's stealing he tells you he wants to succeed correct ask someone in the hospital why they don't want to die they believe that they have a future and they are, there's so much they want to do with their lives and i'm teaching us this because i do not want us to waste our time shadow boxing trying to find meaning and relevance life was not designed to be lived by guesswork you don't have that much time to guess you have to walk through life with a level of exactness and certainty 
If you believe that, say amen. amen. The first price we discussed last week, just a quick recap, is the price of knowing God. Daniel 11 verse 32, the B part. It says, but the people that do know their God, the first price any believer has to pay is the price for an encounter with God. Not just principles. Principles are only useful when there is an encounter with a person. Take note. When you begin to pursue principles and mysteries and you do not have an encounter with God, it will be vain babblings. It will make you arrogant and eventually your results will destroy you. It is your encounter with the person of the Christ through the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that makes every other result you get relevant. There are people who become rich and leave God. There are people who become influential and leave God. That's because they had access to principles but they skipped the place of encounter. So the starting point of any kind of result and that which will last is an encounter. Everybody say an encounter. You must pay the price to know God. Please get the teaching, last week's teaching. I don't want to go over it again. Knowing God requires time. Knowing God requires passion. Knowing God requires prioritizing him above all things. Carnality is not having money. Carnality is not having materials. Carnality is an attachment. The attachment you have a poor person can be carnal you've just not had enough physical materials to help you demonstrate the carnality are we together now and um, there are many many carnal people in the body of Christ attached to things possessions money cars material things here and there and um, you must pay the price to know God number two is the price of genuine submission to authority I taught us about that and I'm glad that many people are beginning to understand this there is an imbalance of authority there is an imbalance of submission that has been taught for many years in the body of Christ is the imbalance of usurping people's rights and making men demigods that's an error is unscriptural there is a place for submission and I took out time to explain to us that the purpose of authority is for protection, provision, and promotion. Nobody promotes himself. Is that true? And um, I know we are all in Christ, but the election of grace has separated people into strata. You violate God's system of blessing, you will pay for it. Everybody has access to the Christ, but God has designed that there is a system by which men receive results one of it is authority so there is an imbalance of authority where people do not have rights again they don't have brains men of god become the gods of people they tell you when to eat they tell you when to have another child they tell you no 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 all the, that is rubbish it's just the insecurity of men on rampage so they spiritualize it and carve out a group of people that can find victims of their insecurities that's in balance praise the Lord Paul said follow me as I follow Christ in other words if at any point you don't find me following Christ do not follow me I want us to be very very clear about the concept of authority there are many insecure men and women of God well-meaning but they carry their complexes from poor backgrounds. They get filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know, Africa is a very loyal continent. We are loyal to men of God. We are loyal to pastors and churches. And sometimes it is that loyalty that has become the unbecoming of people. They were doing well until a man came into their life in the name of fatherhood and mentorship and wrecked and destroyed their life. They made people to leave jobs when they shouldn't leave jobs. They made people to not take drugs when they should take drugs. They made people to all kinds of things and destroy people's lives. Separated husbands and wives when they have no business separating because of some kinds of hilarious vision. So we must be careful. Submission is important. Authority is important. So that's one side of the imbalance. The other side of the imbalance is those who uh, in a bit to address what I just explained. Now tell people there's no such thing as authority. Everybody can access God. No. You fight the body of Christ, you lose. There is a system with which the church was built. Are we together? The Bible tells us that the church was built like a building. He said every house is built by some man. Then he says God is the builder of all. Our walk with God is based on relationship. 
but kingdom advancement is based on covenant and I've explained it to us the way that God operates on earth is that all his multifaceted dimensions are resident within individuals they become the portals through which a generation experiences that dimension of God so prosperity for instance God finds a man opens his understanding to an unusual dimension of God in that area and then makes that man a symbol a portrait a representation of that possibility so that every other man on earth who must enter that dimension must do it in alignment to both God and that system he has set up you will never enter that di you may believe in God but if you do not believe in what that individual represents and submit to it you will never enter that dimension no man will work greatly in the healing ministry insulting Benny Hinn. No man will work greatly in prosperity and faith insulting Kenneth Copeland. Even if you believe you have more revelation than him, he's more than a human being. He's a system that communicates a dimension of God's reality. The Bible is full of mysteries. And um, I wish I had time. I don't want to go back to walk all of those. Remember, there was a time when the nation of Israel wanted to fight war. They were fighting war. And Moses, these guys had their swords. But behind the scene, there was a man who was lifting his rod. Is that true? The Bible says, as he lifted the rod, although the people were the ones doing the physical fighting, but the results were controlled by one man's hand. Now watch this. The Bible says, a time came when Moses' hand was getting weak. The wisest thing to do is to say, sir, you are an elder. Just sit down. Let me help you. Is that not true? The wisest thing to do is to help the man. Not everything can be done by everybody. Ask Saul why he lost his throne. He said, what is there? Somewhere we can't be waiting for you. Are you so special? Give me the knife. And when Samuel came, he said, Saul, what have you done? He said, you would have allowed me come. God would have preserved your throne forever. But now you have done foolishly today by this foolish act. Violating rankings in the spirit, your throne is taken from you. Authority is real. Not everybody you see is a pure human being. I don't know how to make you believe this, but it's true. For this cause, many are weak. Many are sick. People's pride has stopped them from entering simple, cheap victories because of their refusal to understand authority. It's not human worship. There are some battles that are needless if you fight them. If you fight those, if you ever fight those battles, it's because you are not wise. Are we together? Yes. Truly speaking, there are some battles that are products of foolishness. Moses' hand began to go down. The Bible never said their sword stopped being sharp. Just because a man's hand was going down, they started defeating them and they said, look, whatever we would do to support your position for the sake of our victory, we'll do it. I know what many people in our generation will do. Moses, you are not the only one God is talking to. Please help me with that rod, Jerry, and hold it and watch the rod kill you first. It looks simple until you see what is happening in the spirit. A man can say, God prosper. You say, what is there? Is it not just positive conversion? You too, God prospers you and then you don't see any result. Hmm. The law of authority. All the blessings of God come through the scriptural chain of authority. It is from Aaron's head down to his beard. Then it goes down to his skirt. Praise the Lord. When authority is done properly, it produces wonders. When there is any violation of it, whether on the part of the supposed spiritual father or on the part of those who submit to that grace, there will always be problem. Proximity is not submission. Availability, hanging around a grace, is not genuine submission. Submission is not weakness. Please listen, understand this. It is not a proof of weakness. Only a foolish man of God will take advantage of people because of their submission to his grace are we together the law of authority learn it use it command cheap victories in your life it's not idolatry 
when it is done within the confines of scripture it is not idolatry number three we have a lot to do today the third price that we must pay to produce extraordinary results is the price of mental transformation the price of mental transformation numbers chapter 13 please help us media it's a long reading from verse 25 the price of mental transformation the sacrifice of upgrading your paradigm the laborious sacrifice through the agency of the word and every other material whose thoughts are consistent with the word take note first the word of god scripture and then every other material intellectual material whose thought line is consistent with the word of god qualifies to be an instrument of mental transformation there are many believers who study the bible but they do not study the works of people who love god and who have paid the price to access these laws listen let me tell you this the law of the mind is an irrefutable principle if you must command results no matter how spiritual you are your life will eventually be a reflection of your understanding your life your physical environment will inevitably be a reflection of your understanding may not happen immediately but over a given period of time it is safe to say your experience the sum total of your experiences spiritually financially intellectually sociologically is a reflection of both your paradigm and your understanding if you lack money forever it is because there is an understanding you do not have if you are fighting with everybody forever there is an understanding you do not have are we together there can be momentary failures and setbacks agreed but when over a long period of time your experiences are the same is proof that your mindset is delivering that result say amen numbers chapter 13 we are reading from verse 25 to 33 this was the encounter of moses and the 12 spies listen and they returned from searching the land after 40 days we are reading to 33 and they went and came to moses these are the people now and aaron and to the congregation of the children of israel unto the wilderness of paran to kadesh and brought back word to them listen and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and they told them and said we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is an evidence this is the fruit of it nevertheless listen this is a mindset speaking now everyone's communication is a window into your understanding you can fake it for a while but with time you will speak your true convictions nevertheless this is a faulty mindset interrupting the word of god the people that dwelleth in the land and the cities are walled and are very great and moreover we saw the children of anak there the amalekites dwell in the land of the south the hittites and the jebusites and the amorites dwell in the mountains and the canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of jordan and caleb said kai keep quiet what is all this all you people are just bringing negative was i not there with you we saw it we just brought the fruits and caleb stilled the people before moses and said moses as far as i'm concerned this is doable let us go up at once and possess it why for we are well able someone prophesied to yourself i am well able say it again i am well able he said we are able to overcome in other words i'm not refusing it's a challenge he didn't say i'm able to go through it no you don't deny the real boy say we are able there is capacity within us to bring those giants down hallelujah this is the power of a transformed mind a man sits down and prophesies doom to himself because of his mindset i can't make it i am from kaduna state i am from plateau state i am from benway i am from kogi people from our family don't rise is a reflection of your understanding 31 but the men that were up with him said we be not able to go against the people why for they are they've not fought oh. 
they, are, they fought in their minds and were defeated already the result of their defeat was that for we they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report listen now what kind of report poor thinking will always make a man communicate what god calls an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of israel saying the land though we have gone through gone to search it a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature the last verse and there we saw the giants the sons of anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight the anakims never say hey grasshopper the people call themselves grasshoppers the same way you call yourself um, a weak failure the same way you call yourself all kinds of things there is a price to pay to produce extraordinary results let me tell you nobody is born with a transformed mind transformation is a spiritual investment in case you see certain people confident and commanding results again and again it is nobody is transformed by default ladies and gentlemen it is the labor dimension of the world that brings us to a point where we adjust our understanding we've done many teachings aimed at building our mindsets and our understanding have taught us how paradigms are formed the first way paradigms are formed uh, through our cultural backgrounds we come from different cultures and then our environmental conditioning we've lived among people who have been poor and broke we have lived among people who have little or no respect for spiritual things we have lived among people who do not value the power of the Word of God and unconsciously we have imbibed their way of life and their way of thinking as a paradigm a set of belief a plane of interpreting things your reality is interpreted by your perspective and if you do not allow the word of God alter your perspective you will fail in life in a way that you cannot imagine listen I don't care what physical effort you are exerting your life will eventually be a reflection of your mindset there are many people who have failed before they started it was very clear from their mindset and their thinking that they were not going to make it so they were not surprised when they failed it was just a confirmation of a defeat that had been in their minds are we together we were like grasshoppers so they call themselves the bible tells us how to think philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise do what thinking and wishing are two different things wishing is just mesmerizing on a result that you will never happen in your life but thinking is constructing your mind your understanding many people do not think well they don't even think at all and if they do they think on negative things listen to me much more than your physical activity focus on making sure that your mindset has been constructed to produce victory are we together you were insulted growing up you probably were abused growing up and it put something in your mind about men and you keep saying every man is a devil every man is no not every man is a devil in your world and based on your experience all the people you have encountered are bad but why don't you expand your horizon how about prosperity there are so many people when you tell them will you prosper they say when I read what <laughs> when I read what because a society has programmed your mind that your wealth is entirely dependent on just what you studied so people make they go out of their way to do malpractice because they hope that by so doing it will give them an edge correct what do you believe about yourself what do you believe about God what do you believe about life you've heard me say it again and again 
it never ceases to amaze me those who hang themselves or, co or commit suicide I don't think I hate myself that much ah, I understand quarreling myself but to hang yourself is, um, is, is quite you must be assisted by a spirit you become a reflection a physical reflection of your most dominant thoughts the thoughts that construct your understanding eventually become your life bring me someone who is as weak and beggarly and as villager as anything provided that person's heart is open to receive and learn give me six months with that person of thorough upgrading of his mind I'm not talking of business I'm not talking of whatever just allow me to change and alter that person's mind if I never see that person in my life again I can tell you staking my life that that person will be a success regardless of what his life is at that moment now here's the reverse accumulate a lot of physical things to hide the true state of your mind your understanding will take them away from your life until you look like what you believe are we together now let's do a little experiment look up don't feel bad how many of you have noticed that certain financial blessings only come at certain levels you never cross 30,000 mark if somebody blesses you with 200,000 it will finish and return back to that range it, your understanding pegged you like the thermostat of an iron you know how an iron is you program it to be this hot when it gets there what happens it breaks that's it there are people who will never cross hundred thousand give them one million they will laugh only for one week that money the, the behavioral patterns that come from faulty thinking will alter their behavior and make them act in a way a manner that reduces them back to the mindset of those who are hundred thousand allocators so it's not enough to just claim and say i'm a millionaire there is an understanding that resonates with that level of living and you must upgrade in your mind it's like resonance in physics remember those who are science-based there's something called resonance in physics that when you hit a tuning fork is that true at a particular frequency every other object within that environment that is the same frequency without touching it starts resonating that's how it is every result you have in the spirit has a spiritual frequency mental level that calls it when you want a result that is higher than your level of thinking it cannot resonate to it so your mindset must rise let me tell you when it gets there it will come in a heartbeat forget about the physical activities that act themselves to manifest it in your life that's that's little issue but we focus on who will bless me and how it will come that's that's not the issue just settle it in your mind you have programmed yourself truly to be successful when you want to know the true secret behind a man's result don't look at the physical result under study the understanding of that man you see that you get blessed from successful people not just by benefiting from the result of their success unfortunately that's what mediocres do they are obsessed by the result the tie the shoe the watch the car the um, anointing the miracles wheelchair no there is an understanding that helps that man to partner with the holy spirit so that that kind of result be produced when you have that construction then you are ready for victory the prize of mental transformation are you still living like your yesterday and expecting tomorrow's result it doesn't work that way sir you will never never be able to receive results at the mental state that brought the challenge that has pegged you let me tell you what challenges are challenges are a proof that your current level of understanding has reached its expiry level the moment you are confronted with an, a supposedly unsurmountable challenge is a proof to you. I teach the school of ministry students that challenges are a letter from your future to you saying I am there and I am real but your mental state now cannot take you there. Challenges are a letter from your future to you saying I exist, I am real but you will not arrive there with your current level of understanding i am passionate about god exposing my area of ignorance it doesn't embarrass me some of us are so ego
egocentric that the moment you are aware that there is need for upgrade in an area it embarrasses us you must be flexible enough to admit that where i am is a reflection of something i do not know are we together do you believe this apostle i don't have friends everybody hates me it's a lie there is something about your understanding that keeps creating that reality apostle money comes and it disappears yes there can be demonic issues but the demons don't just come and act foolishly they act upon a mindset that can host them the day your mindset becomes hostile to their presence that's the day you break free that's why true deliverance after casting out the demons there must be a reconstruction of your understanding to make your environment no longer conducive for the activity of demon space it is almost vain to lay hands and cast out demons and leave the same mindset that brought them you are only recycling a journey of endless suffering that's why when demons find out that a particular man of God does not have intelligence enough to holistically secure people's deliverance, the demons are in a hurry to leave. They mock you. Before you raise your hand, they go, knowing that their access point is still there. The door is open. Are we together? Something about your thinking is responsible for your limitation. There is a way Africa thinks we have subsistent thinking there is a way men of god think that don't give them results there is a way they think that they get results please every time you see a man of god a system a businessman whatever commanding results don't enjoy the flamboyancy of the physical results but if you really want to receive you must be able to labor to buy into their understanding so the bible says this let this mind permit this mind philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 permit this mindset this thinking this construction this set of understanding to be in you that was also in christ jesus and then things will respond to you the same way they responded to jesus born around a manger still didn't matter upgraded his mind 30 years he was to live 33 and a half years and he spent over 90 percent of his life committing to development and in three years he did something that through eternity will not recover from listen listen hear this advice never be in a rush to manifest physical results in your life don't be in a rush to start business someone met me one time and said sir what the way you are looking at me I don't know what I meant prophetically or physically. He said, what business do you think I can do? I said, none. You will fail in every business you do, no matter how simple it is. And this is the reason. It's not because you are lazy. It is because you do not get the understanding of a prosperous person by default. Sincerity is one of the seeds for greatness. So you may be sincere. It's like someone who is very sincere wants to transport you from one place to the other but cannot drive will his sincerity take you there as well meaning as that person is it's not if you die it's when that car will capsize don't labor to show physical results you try to buy a shoe of hundred thousand to make a statement I guarantee you your carelessness and your wrong thinking is going to spoil that shoe you'll be surprised that you never kick it on a wall but in one month the shoe will open up something about your wrong belief will mount pressure on that state your mind is saying it's a lie your physical realm is not agreeing with your mental realm something will happen I've given you an analogy again and again take a poor person take someone who is one of the least workers in any business organization or any company put him in the director's office for two weeks don't tell him anything just put him there and say you have unlimited access to this office do you know what he will do number one he's going to steal are you seeing the mindset he will steal because he knows for sure that he's only there for a short time number two he will not clean and arrange the place what can i get so things the mediocre what can i get not what can i give he will sit down watch television drink all the juice in the fridge snap himself take selfies and then try to what can i steal oh there's one carton of water if i take five nobody will know that's a mediocre that's the reason why he will remain where he is 
in two weeks he would turn that office into his mindset but take a great man to a room that is messy cobwebs everywhere and he sits down his mindset refuses and say no this is not you whoever has your mindset should sweep the room and so he sweeps the room whoever has the mindset should clean the room in five days you come back and see the same room no cobwebs he would have bought a rock to put there as at the time he was deciding he didn't have money but his mindset told him how it will come is the last the most important thing is to plan there is power when you set goals this is a renewed mind a poor man will say i beg this nigeria i don't have any father anywhere and remain there after one year he has not been able to buy a rock something about our understanding is responsible for the way we are is that true i look at myself and i look at the dimensions god wants to take me and i look at many things i do not know that is responsible for my current level of results and so i continue to search find out if i know what follow runsha lakija knows then i will be a billionaire in dollars correct listen respect results don't trivialize results results are not luck especially predictable results predictable result time is a revealer of the accuracy of your convictions when you see a result that is sustained it was based on laws it wasn't based on magic i can dash you one million but you cannot become a millionaire for five years by mistake no sir it's a lie I can lay hands on you temporarily and you can even lay hands on someone in the wheelchair and leave the person but brothers and sisters you will not organize crusades for two years non-stop when intrinsically you have not received that grace the bible never said the donkey talked forever he talked for a moment and his mouth was shut the bible never said the rod bordered forever psalm 78 verse 41 a scripture that has become a national anthem in this place it said but they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they were in the wilderness and they limited him can god make a way can god make a way can god make a way the bible says they limited him as mighty as god is brothers and sisters we can limit him through our understanding we can limit him someone met me one time and said apostle God doesn't want to encourage me to love. I said, what's the meaning of that? He said, I've told God I want to buy a Dix Bible. I've told God I don't even want clothes for myself. Just spiritual items, messages, anointing oil, all these kind of things. And God, nobody is even help. And I said, show me the paper where you wrote them down. Show me the scripture you, at, you, you put on them. And he said, no, I don't have anything. I said, so if I were God, I would do the same thing. Show me the paper. Where have you gone to the market to find out how much anointing oil is? That's a proof of faith. It's a sign that you know it will come. Faith is conviction and the action you take based on that conviction. Are we together? Yes. Let me tell you how to know people don't walk by faith. They are vague in their expectations. Vagueness is a sign you are not sure the result will come. The Bible says, give us. He told you who to give. Number two, he says, this day, then, what our daily bread? Give us this day our daily bread. Specificity is very important in manifesting faith. So that when the result comes, you are sure that this is what I released my faith for. Is God speaking to us? When you package your physical environment without the requisite mental upgrade and transformation, you have only flattered yourself. It's like throwing your money in a basket because everything will disappear. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen, especially for we who are young. I know that we live in a society that mounts pressure on a gentleman and a lady to show. Uh -uh, you finished school four years ago till now. You can't even buy a nice jean. And so we go out of our way to try to paint our physical world to look like a reality that we have upgraded ourselves into. And we keep, you notice that you keep rising up 
and falling rising up and falling your physic you try to fake it your mindset brings you back that's what happened to many of our loved ones i've told people why fake something that can be real you don't have to fake it when it can be real brothers and sisters hear me you may be in a small one room right now no carpet no recharge card no nothing you are using a, a simple phone that you don't even know the name there's no name on it you just bought it somewhere don't allow that disturb you if you can take the word of god the beautiful thing about your mind is that it's not limited by time and space continue to upgrade yourself in the name of jesus i may have gary today but i will feed nations and you study the word of god and it's constructing your mind there is he that stirreth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Ah, so an attachment for things is why money doesn't come. You write it in the name of Jesus. I have no attachment to things. When God brings them, money is a slave and a servant, never to become a God and a master. I am a giver. And then you study again, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So it's God that can make all grace abound. That means I don't need to worry about how the results will happen. It is God's office that allocating how the physical results will manifest. Are we together? You begin to study. You see. The Bible says love never fails. That means if there is anything that is failing in my life, when I add love to it, I can turn the results around. So you construct your mindset. Let me tell you the first thing that will happen to you when your mind begins to transform. Your environment will start fighting you because immediately your friends and your environment, your thinking will start making you act in a physical way that will make them say, what are, are you the only one who is a Christian? What is all these things? We are, we are talking about all of this in, I beg, man must walk. And he said, no, sorry, I don't speak like that again. With all due respect, something is happening to me. He said, eh, you... You better finish all that grammar and let's come and soak Gary. They are trying to pull you back. Say the devil is a liar. Say it again. And they will pull you back and say, it's true. Let me go back, Jerry. This koinonia thing, you are just talking like fools. Even God knows. Well, will I lie? I'm like that. I'm, I'm not. And you start complaining and reprogram yourself back to your current state. While people are watching football, you buy a book, 500 naira, and you sit down. When people are hilariously celebrating birthdays when they don't have any money, God just opens a door, 10,000 naira, and you just say, Ah, my birthday is tomorrow. Kai, will I die like that? Let me enjoy myself. Are we together? Your birthday clothes, 8,000. Whatever else you buy, you cook, and the money has finished. And you feel good about that day and continue suffering. Or someone can say, this is my birthday. I may not be a millionaire overnight, but let me make it the last birthday. When by this time, one year, I should at least be able to have options for the food I eat. We don't make that decision. We don't study. What are you doing? I'm browsing something. What, who is that? Um, somebody he I mean very powerful is a wonderful Christian and he's speaking minded of great people say I beg I want to watch one film it just came out am, am I mocking movies no please don't don't misunderstand me but I'm saying if you continue to flatter yourself and not commit yourself to personal development you will never be great I was talking with a dear friend today and I was telling them, gone are the days where people think ministers are daft people. They are just people who manipulate the minds of people. Ministers are very intelligent people. It takes a lot of intelligence alongside spirituality to be able to communicate thoughts. I was coming with one of the protocol persons and when we were coming, I was asking him what he's doing now and he said he wanted to go into public speaking. And I said, wow. I said, really, everybody is a public speaker. The moment you are a leader in any field, you are a public speaker. Public speaking is all about communicating thoughts. It takes intelligence, it takes psychology, it takes leadership, it takes content. Not just that God sent you and said, go to America. 
go to um, whatever and then you go and stand and say well the most important thing is the miracle that will happen right now don't worry well, if you like be sleeping while I'm talking you will soon suspect you and say you are a herbalist because the foundation upon which the power comes you see our incompetence raises the propensity for suspicion especially where you know that there is the lavish anointing of God upon your life you must have both a sound word and intellectual balance so that as you are communicating the word of God there is a, a synergy with your result anybody that listens knows that no 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 this person has paid his price I will be silly believing that he should not be at this level of results say in the name of Jesus I receive grace to pay the price of mental transformation I buy the truth and I sell it not hallelujah one way we transit mentally is to find out those who are current reflections of our aspirations and then to buy into their thinking and their paradigms here's how the Bible puts it it says follow them so not everybody is worthy of being followed it says honor all men but you can't follow all men listen there is this African trado African mentality of loyalty to people ideas and systems that are obsolete and do not have capacity to make you great listen the Bible says and David served his generation every generation has a curriculum of understanding you must understand the generation with which you are sent to minister to and be able to construct your mind to understand their needs and how best to communicate it I'm sent to minister to all men but I always tell people that the age range of my influence and my impact is 15 to 50 if you are within the range age range of 15 to 50 you are within my generation of influence now that does not mean people like our daddy and our elderly ones here I will bless you but you will be surprised that Bishop Oyedeko and Papa Adeboye will be more useful to them than a young man like me is that true because they grew with that generation if you're a ministry here and people tell you are ministering to young people you better rejoice and don't think it's an embarrassment because that means you'll be ministry for a long time if you're a ministry and every of your member is at least 60 65 I have a very sad news for you you are not going to last because um, those people are at the level of their life where they are interested in legacy don't tell them speak well no not at that age my brother they are writing books and mentoring another generation we laugh at those in children's ministry and say ah you as big as you are those children in 20 years will become leaders now in the world we have young people I foresee times when in the next 10 15 years you will have presidents in their 20s young people whose minds are malleable and flexible the world has grown enough to discern results more than biological age when you have results they allow you look at France has already set the pace now with their prime minister other nations will follow through a time will come when if you are not competent early you will join a queue that will never reach your turn forever I want you to believe what I'm saying it is true it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth pay the price now pay the price now you may be laughed at now but pay the price are we blessed change your perception change your paradigm don't focus on just starting business as wonderful as that is or getting a job as wonderful as that is pay the price pay the price to build your mind then your job I have said it again and again I'm not necessarily talking about money but you don't make money off business you make money off your understanding you don't become great off the physical things you do you become great off your understanding may the Lord cause us to be men and women of great understanding in the name of Jesus you've heard me say it again and again that we will all be great but the greater part of the news is that we will all know ourselves you will see it happen yes you will see it happen we may not look like it now the Bible says now are we the sons of God it says and it doth not yet appear 
until you see the quality of children that our generation will produce filled with the holy ghost from age two why because a healthy mindset is the head of that family loving god because you understand the principles that at age 60 you look 30 because both the joy and the peace and the prosperity of the lord together have constructed and extended your life in quietness and peace that you will be called Dula and Hefziba, unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. And people ask you, how are you doing it? You say, I can reproduce it again and again. It was not luck. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, help me. Grant me grace to be passionate about transforming my understanding. Stop complaining about the physical results you do not see. Brothers and sisters, that should be the least of your concern. Lord, deliver me from a fake life. Are we praying? Deliver me from a life that tries to show I am there when I am not there. I receive the patience. I receive the patience. I know that I'm not going to become a millionaire overnight. I will not become anointed overnight. I receive the patience to carefully build my understanding. Lift your voice and pray. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional man of God. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional wife, exceptional husband, exceptional career person, exceptional businessman, an exceptional politician. I focus on mental transformation. I pay attention to look for men and women who are a reflection of my desire. Your future is somebody's experience today. And the Bible instructs that we are transformed by the word of God. But again, by following them who through faith and understanding, allowing our minds to rise above our cultural limitations, everything they have told you growing up, you will never be great. You are poor. You are small. You are a non-entity. You probably have failed again and again in life to a point where you do not believe that there is such a possibility for favor. Something has told you you will never be a good wife. You will never be a good husband. It could be friends, backgrounds. I'd like you to pray and say, I cast down every imagination and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. I bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. I decree and declare that I am well able, 10 times better. My life has no limitations. My only limitation is the voice of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am limitless. Hallelujah. Listen. Don't listen to what I'm saying and think I'm just talking nonsense. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, you'll fail in life. Yes, you will. And you will live an angry and resentful life. Our society is full of very angry people. Do you know, one of the reasons why people are angry is not because of their challenges. It's because of their understanding and their interpretation of it. The Bible says to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in what? If you rejoice in your certificate, one day it will make you angry. The day you are not promoted. If you rejoice just in your husband alone, your wife alone, your child, your car, your business. All those things, they fluctuate. But it says rejoice in a constant factor called the Lord and again I say rejoice and your joy will never have a reason to bend when when you see people happy and making merriment and rejoicing sometimes they say ah these people are lucky if you know what those people are going through half it may kill you but they have made up their minds that their joy is not defined by the things around them. They understand that joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit. You use it to draw from the wells of salvation. It's not circumstances that... Make, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Meaning when I lose joy, I lose strength. And Satan understands this. So he will orchestrate it. I thought you said you will enter a relationship by January. You even open your mouth and told people, Now is November, oh, my sister. And you just say, hey, how about God? There are many men in Koinonia now. Won't they see me? You are already responding to it. But the joy of the Lord. Oh, Lord, I give you praise. I thank you. Where is the God that brought the servant of Isaac to come and meet Rebekah? That same God will connect me. Lord, I give you praise. Before the arrival of the man, I continue working on myself to become a woman of virtue. That the day that gentleman sees me, he will never be able to sleep again. Good preparation. What do you do while waiting for your miracle? 
among many things praise and prepare mm. praise and prepare is God blessing us yes you will never and I say it with all humility you never see me putting my hand on my chin and say hi life you say why now I say, Nigeria you not seeing what is happening I choose to be joyful I choose to make merry in my world there is absolute peace the world you talk about is the one your mindset created oh. in my world there is peace and love and joy apostle you see what is going on in this country I know but I know that there is a God in heaven he was not dethroned he's alive hallelujah he's alive apostle are you hearing that terrorists are entering churches and bombing everywhere oh i understand that as the mountains surround jerusalem there is a construction i am happy joy is a defense you plant fear and plant hatred and before you know it what you used to believe you now stop it and throw it away no be joyful prophesy to your neighbor say be joyful say to another remain joyful amen yes when two people are fighting the first thing that disappears is laughter so when you cannot laugh and you are happy before god something is wrong oh god i'm here again Abba, you say better come and answer me what is all this thing i'm saying is it that you are not seeing my own prayer request or is it that apostle son is not touching my own what is all this i keep writing this thing and when you the devil say please continue i i beg you continue you frustrate satan when you look at your challenges and rejoice before them he says what then do i do it's a sign you are not living in the flesh are we together you get up in the morning and there's no food and you can have a sarcastic roommate or neighbor who says pastor gary has finished though they say it with sarcasm are, are you do you have people like that around your life yes they will say to me please prosperity confessor gary has finished there is soup but no gary i tell god there is already soup just help us with gary they try to mock you but do you know mockery is a mystery every time listen every time men are mocking you it's a sign something has left heaven and satan is trying to use men to stop it read your bible every time they mocked men when the mockery was at the apex the result was almost arriving When we started out in ministry, many people mocked and said nonsense and said all kinds of things. And the Lord told me, just continue to rejoice and celebrate. And hallelujah, look what he's done. And will continue to do by his grace. Make up your mind that you are going to be a happy person. Make up your mind from today's teaching that you will be joyful. Apostle, nine o'clock, my rent must be paid. My brother, anger will not pay rent. Your your annoyance will not even add to it so you better be happy because even physically it can make some what is making you joyful like this and you say i'm smiling in the midst of the storm i say storm what storm and the person comes in tell your loved ones to be happy our generation of young people are becoming unnecessarily old because of stress you see somebody 20 years old they tell you he has bp <laughs> sir what are you thinking about saying my life I'm 20, I'm not in a relationship. Like, ah, are you joking? What in the world is this? What's, what's wrong with you? Listen to our character building series. Walk on your mind. What did you watch? Which movies have you been watching that have raped away your patience? But when you see somebody rejoicing, always happy. You come back from Koinonia, I'm happy. Somebody is grumbling in the car. You just say, well, God bless you. You arrive home, you are happy. What will we eat? Well, there may not be food. And truly, sometimes it can be painful. But Lord, I give you all the praise. How long will I keep dancing? For as long as the answer comes. Let me tell you, waiting for miracles is like getting pregnant. I will never have the privilege of having that experience. But one thing I know is that I've been in the hospital many times to see the joy of giving birth to a child. For as soon as you travel, travel in joy, Brothers and sisters, the God who promised you will bring it to pass. Oh, yes. I have seen men celebrate the victory of trusting God. I will hold on. If I perish, I perish. If God said it, I believe him. 
Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. God is speaking to you. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me encourage you tonight. Be patient with God. Be patient. Be patient with God. It didn't take you one day to build that understanding. Just continue with God. Apostle, it's been three years I've been coming for Koinonia. I can't even pay my transport. Don't worry. The word of God is working. The day the miracle will come, not even your prayer will stop it. God says it's too late. When your mindset has built it, no. A day will come. In one month, you will see cars in Koinonia. You'll be like, oh, it's a season. It's not a season. The, if the car is being given to you now. Your colleagues are saying, my brother, won't you buy a car? Don't worry. Don't go and kill yourself trying to get loan anywhere. Just calm down. Leave the issue of loan and stay with God. Take your Okada with honor and give God praise. The day to come, it will come in a grand style. I assure you. You have only two shirts. I've noticed this is the only thing you wear. Well, I'm not ashamed of it. At least I'm not a thief. I will iron the shirt. It's faded. But I thank God you are seeing it now. I was looking at some of my photos today. So I'm not even very... I looked at some of them and I said, Ah! God, you are faithful. What are we saying? You are so faithful. Listen. Let me give many of you a message of hope at your level i was worse than how you look now so you better encourage yourself and say if i'm at this level and i'm already smiling like this it means when i get to a level higher than where i am is joy unspeakable and full of glory number four what's the third price is the price of being skillful write it down the price of being valuable the price of being skillful Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 it's become an anthem in koinonia the gift of a man and I add the gift of a man that's been identified developed and added to with excellence take note not just the gift of a man the raw material potential gift no sir it won't bring you before great men the gift of a man an ability a potential identified developed are we together now and then alongside excellence when you serve your gift with excellence the bible says it will make room hallelujah and will bring you before great men nobody celebrates potential we recognize potential but we celebrate potential that has been developed the world we live in rewards value you must be able to rise to a point where you provide value that is needed and useful not value that you know your value must be needed and useful the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system listen carefully the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system money being only one of the rewards ease is a reward for being valuable are we together now very important proverbs chapter 13 verse 15 it says good understanding procures favor good understanding gives favor good understanding is like a pregnant woman when she gives birth the name of her child is favor it says but the way of the transgressor a transgressor is not a sinner the way of a transgressor is hard hardship has a formula you can predict it good understanding giveth favor but the way of transgressors is what you must be skillful nobody stays close to me and refuses to be skillful you must be skillful we train the leaders in this ministry to be skillful the workers everybody you must be skillful oh i can sing wonderful but will Don Muen call you because of your voice? Have you worked upon yourself? 
what do you know about singing the truth is that many of us at least to an appreciable level we have discovered areas here and there in our lives but the challenge for many of us is the mental and physical inertia that laziness to develop ourselves to a point where we get to a point of unconscious competence everybody shout it after me say competence say it again competence let me tell you something i've learned about competence competence defies age gender tribal and racial um differences and, and all of and sentiments I have seen people rewarded regardless of where they came from I've seen people rewarded and blessed different fields listen anything you are doing if you do not plan to be a leader in that field don't do it are we together I will never commit my energy to anything that I will not be a leader in whether it is ministry whether it is business you may start small but your the those who are rewarded in any field are the leaders of the field in the academia the professor collects the highest salary why because he has been able to upgrade his mind and access value to that point where he deserves it you may be a student or a lecturer or a staff or a worker but if you have not risen to that level of competence you may never have the privilege of access make up your mind that I will be competent. Say it, I will be competent. Say it again, I must be competent. The law of value. Your value, when developed, decide who pursues you. Your value, when developed, decides who pursues you. Mike Mudok teaches that your a problem is an invitation for a reward. A problem is an invitation for a reward. Until there is a problem that you can solve, I teach our school of ministry students that you are unnecessary. Herein lies the mystery of people ignoring you. When you are not valuable, you will not be a friend to anybody. Write this down. Discover and develop problem-solving skills. Discover and develop problem-solving skills. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master brothers and sisters what we do that you call ministry is solving problems you know I've said it again and again many people get angry when men of God are blessed because many people carry they propose that understanding that men of God are lazy people who just receive free money from people. If they believe that men of God eat the church tithe and offerings and they buy cars and buy houses, it may be true for some, but it's not so for most. Men of God become blessed because they are offering value. That the value is spiritual in context. Now I am teaching you, is that true? I'm reshaping your mind. I'm adding value to you. The system of the kingdom is every time you dispense value, whether you sell it or give it free, you are authorized to be rewarded. Are we together now? You only have a problem with a man who you see blessings in his life, whether financial and otherwise, and you cannot see the value equivalent. So when I look at a billionaire like Bill Gates, I see the value equivalent. That's why we don't harass him. If I look at a criminal who is not offering any value, yet his bank account is fat, then I know that the equation does not balance. Before you ever criticize a blessed man, examine the value. Now, you may not have risen to a level of perception where you think what he's doing is valuable enough to bring reward, but it still does not matter. Everybody say, I will be valuable. Say it again, I will be valuable. I will be skillful. 
Become a master at something, Koinonia, and wave poverty goodbye. Become a master at something. If I ask you what are you a master at and you cannot tell me in one word, at best, you will wallow around the realm of mediocrity and never rise up to be something. The concept of being multi-talented is good, but those who are masters in life are known for something. There must be a skill that sets you out. Then other skills are auxiliary supporting skills that lift you. Are we together now? I'm not only a man of God and many other things, but most people know me as a man of God. And they may think that's all I am and that's all that I do. There are many other aspects to my life. But there is always a skill that opens the door. That skill that brings you to the table of greatness. Then you leverage upon that. And other gifts and talents are now supporting. Is that true? Yes. You must be valuable. Now the oil in Nigeria and Africa is having a lot of problem fluctuations here and there and you can see that the whole nation is moving down that's a sign that we were never offering real value are we together if we we're offering real value the depleting of the oil prices should not affect our gdp necessarily because there should be skilled labor there should be captains of industry and people who are skilled because we are largely depending on oil there is very little reward this uh, our society pays very very little reward on meritocracy the people the those who deserve things are not rewarded but in certain parts of the world where you are content even if they hate you that reward for sure will come to you in the name of jesus christ i pray for you May you be valuable. Being valuable will drive shame out of your life. I tell you this. Being valuable, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. It says, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. There is a relationship between ignorance and shame. Are we together? There is a relationship. There is a correlation between ignorance and shame. Those who are angry, insulting every blessed person, insulting those who are making things happen in society are those who have not paid the price to identify their giftings, their ability, their skill, their talent, and to invest time, resources, and humility to build themselves to a point where they become leaders of their field. I've made up my mind that in everything I'm involved in, I will be flawlessly competent. It's a commitment I've made to myself. And I pray that you make that commitment tonight. Never settle. The enemy of your next level is the success of your last level. Be careful. Failure does not make people fail. It stimulates them to go high. But the moment you begin to achieve results, there is a chance that you will be complacent. I will be valuable. Become a master solution provider. There is no mystery about wealth. It's not a miracle. It's not magic. It's a system, a reward system of the kingdom. Remember that I said your value on its own cannot bless you. It must be developed. Everybody say developed. There is a season of refining your value. One gentleman sent me a text in the course of the week and said apostle i'm starting ministry i don't know exactly what to do but i believe that as i start i think i hope i'm getting what he said correctly i'm starting and i know that god will bless me just speak a word i said no sir it's not a word that moves ministry a word is over you then principles guide you as you walk Obviously, that gentleman will not last one month. He will be angry at the neighboring churches and be angry at members who come and go and not know why they are going. You hear people complain. Why will you come to my church and receive miracles and go away? And they think the solution is just prayer. Man of God, change my story. Yes, God can change your story. But the men of God or the men that come to your church are human beings. They respond to value. By the time you continue to give people information that are needed and useful and they watch their lives transform the bible says he makes me lie down in green pastures you cannot make them lie down but you can make the pastures green then they will come and lie down they never visit green pastures when it is truly green they lie down 
information that is spiritual information that is transforming information that is needed and useful well researched and intelligently communicated backed up by the anointing of the spirit that's the kind of information that stays in today's world and in today's church any other information outside this let me tell something with members members are very funny they can say ah you know you say something that is complete rubbish and somebody stands up and says my god and while they are doing that you are so impressed with yourself and next sunday he never comes again members for you are we learning how was my preaching today ah, i mean i can't even start i mean it was it was it was strange and instead of the man of God to be honest enough to admit that guy and try and go back and trust God to help, he said, You mean it? I mean, that's that's he says, sir. This message is a, is a bestseller. And then the mem the person does not come. The moment somebody opens a church near you in a heartbeat, they will leave you. Because they were never loyal to you. They are loyal to themselves and their commitment to their transformation. And if you lose relevance and you cannot be a strategic contributor to their growth, spiritually and otherwise, then there's no reason why they listen to you. I've committed myself that nobody listens to me and just says this person, well, well just a daft. No, 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 no. It takes a lot of study. It takes a lot of labor, research, commitment. I'm committed to doing it. This is the key to remaining relevant. Are we together? You must be skillful. Write this scripture down. We're not turning for time's sake. Genesis 41. Um, okay, let's just look at two verses. Genesis 41. The whole scripture is from verse 14 to 46. That's the whole context from verse 14 to 46. But please give us 14 and 31. This was Joseph now. The Bible says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Are we together? Now he began to interpret Pharaoh's dream and then to proffer a solution. And in verse 33. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man. Look at a politician. After he finishes marketing himself. He said, Pharaoh, it's not like I'm saying I want to be the one. But you, since you are smart, who has committed himself to being that valuable? Look for a man who is discreet and wise. And when you find such a man, mm, when you find such a man, do what? He, sees, he programmed his own promotion. When you find that man, this is the level of result that should be given to that man. Set him over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Everybody say mastery. It's leadership. This is called leadership. Pace setting. Trailblazing. That no, this is not competition. This is the reward that comes when you labor and stand out. Competition is in the realm of mediocres. You never see planes clashing in the air because there's enough space. It's cars that move around and have traffic for a very long time. You seldom see traffic in the air. There is space for champions. Hallelujah. Say I'm one of them. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as God has showed you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Let's continue reading. Um, Thou shalt immediately be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have said thee this day over all the land of Egypt. Did he ask him what tribe? Did he ask him, are you a Jew or you are this? <laughs> you have solved my problem, you have reward. And Pharaoh took off his ring, the ring in his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. Go ahead. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over the land of Egypt. Let's see something interesting that happened now. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee, shall no man authority through competence shall no man lift his hand or foot in the land of egypt let's finish it two more verses and pharaoh called joseph's name but whatever that is that's a very long name there and he gave him to wife asena 
free wife getting a wife becomes easy when you are valuable this is the revelation god is giving us yes you can clap getting a wife becomes almost effortless when you are valuable god programmed that way not everybody will produce the same result but there must be a token a token a sign that you are going somewhere and joseph went over the land of egypt the last verse how old was he and joseph was what this is somebody's lifetime achievement he did it at age 30. if you got born again at 30 you are behind time i teach on the graph of life you can get my message that's a sign that you need to catch up and when he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and joseph went out from the presence of pharaoh and went throughout the land of egypt your competence can give god space to lift you your competence can give god space to lift you make up your mind to be valuable pray in one minute before we talk about the last point and then we'll pray father in name of jesus i receive grace to be skillful lift your voice and pray plant in me a resentment for mediocrity plant in me a resentment for average being a local champion being satisfied by little results being celebrated by mediocres competing myself with people who are not even doing anything i receive grace are you praying in the name of jesus i declare i decree and i declare go ahead and pray lord i will rise in business i set myself to become a leader in that field in the mighty name of jesus in my career i will rise to a managerial level i will not stop till i reach the apex i will not celebrate the mediocrity that has come with my background if you're a northern and pray hard pray twice in the name of jesus the mediocrity that comes with my territory i i declare that i break through it if i need to take certifications i set myself to personal development if i need to upgrade myself in knowledge i receive grace if i need seminars and training i receive grace if i need to submit myself consciously for mentorship i receive grace grace to follow those who through faith and patience i will not waste my day again i will turn my laptop to a university i will turn my android device to a university i take advantage of the information on the internet in ministry in business i find out the leaders in my field and i press to know what they know hallelujah let me tell you how to know you are becoming a leader when somebody is following you if there is nobody following you to learn from you you are not a leader you claim you are a businessman show me those who you have raised because wisdom is justified by her children most people who follow you are people you have mentored unconsciously you were minding your business producing results and your result became too obvious to be ignored the book of mark says all men seek for thee please if you truly are part of this ministry resent mediocrity are we together resent mediocrity doesn't matter whether you graduated with a pass or graduated with whatever you can re-engineer yourself re-educate yourself then you will change your finances then you will change that talk that 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 statements they always make they will continue to jay at you and say Saul killed 1,000 David killed 10,000 competition will never leave the habitation of mediocres there is a realm you must rise to repeated mistakes are a sign that you are in ignorance before you take out any physical step again go for knowledge number four pray in the spirit for one minute thank you lord jesus your word is changing me i receive grace hallelujah the fourth price and will be done for today please i want to have everybody's attention because what i'm about to teach you 
is a very big secret most of you may think you know it but i want you to listen to me with your spirit listen with your heart the price of building quality relationships is the fourth price you must pay if you want to establish extraordinary results in your life the price of building quality relationships relationships are advantageous connections connections relationships are advantageous connections the easiest way to be wealthy and to be blessed in life is through relationships i've taught you this i'm repeating it so that you will understand the easiest way to be blessed in life brothers and sisters is through relationship relationships are powerful relationships are irrefutable there is no champion without quality relationships relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy anything money can buy relationships can buy it the only reason why money is useful is because there is a human being at the other end to collect it that human being can choose to say my relationship has paid for it i've said it again if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not working in wisdom now money is only one of many currencies relationship being the highest at the cadre second only to godliness and your spiritual connection let me tell you something of all the currencies that men used to purchase results in life physical money notes currencies is the least of them there are seven currencies i hope that by god's grace i'll teach it next year seven currencies we use to purchase results in life everything in life is bought it's just that money is not the only currency relationship is a priceless currency higher than gold higher than the dollar learn this god called abraham alone and lot who was related went with him that was the only thing lot did and he became stupendously wealthy relationships can determine the next course of your results and lack of it can keep you stagnated almost for a lifetime please i want you to learn this the presence of a quality relationship in your life can define the next level of your success lack of it can stagnate you sometimes even for a lifetime you are one quality relationship underline quality you are one quality relationship away from your next level of results believe me on this you are one quality relationship away from the next level of your result you know all of this already my emphasis is not just to talk about the relationships but to be able to guide us on principles i've noticed believers know very little about relationships this is why many of us have been grounded although skilled a few scriptures four of them one amos chapter 3 verse 3 please write it down the bible says can two walk together except they be agreed modern day interpretation two cannot walk together unless they be compatible there must be similarity in their paradigms and understanding Two people cannot become friends when there is a large difference in their perspectives there must be similarity you must believe similar things about god about life about money about family it qualifies you to be friends second scripture very very touching scripture proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24 proverbs chapter 18 and 24 it tells us that he who desires friends you must sow that seed proverbs 18 and verse 24 lets us know that relationship is a harvest meaning that until you sow that seed there is no harvest of relationship it says a man that had friends must first show himself what friendly and trying to show yourself friendly will require you for bearing and even sticking closer than a brother most of us want the harvest of friendship and relationships and we never sow the seeds you don't go to a farm at around this time waiting to harvest when you did not plant relationships are harvests we must sow the seeds
Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Read with me. One, two, read. He that walketh with the wise shall do what? But a friend of foolish friends, what will he get? It didn't say foolish people don't have a future. That's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible says you are a product of your environment. He that walks with the wise shall himself be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Please write this down, everyone. Relationships do not maintain themselves. Relationships do not maintain themselves. It takes commitment on the part of all the parties involved to maintain relationships. Relationships do not maintain themselves. This is a fallacy that many of us must be delivered from. Relationships do not maintain themselves. It takes commitment on the part of all, not some, all the parties involved to maintain relationships. Please listen to this and you will be surprised that you will multiply your success. Relationships do not maintain themselves. Apostle, people don't like me. Show me the seeds you are sowing. The seeds of friendship. Are we together now? Apostle, nobody wants to walk. This koinonia people say, they say, greet one another. They don't even greet me. No, sir. How to maintain relationships. This is the crux of the teaching. How to maintain relationships. I want to give you seven keys. Every one of us, make sure you learn these keys. If you truly learn these keys, I give you a guarantee. Those outside is dark, but make sure you're writing. Those online connecting everywhere, I want to show you the reason why your favor might be delayed. Number one, the first key to maintaining relationships is avoid competitive jealousy. Write it down. Key number one, you cannot sustain quality relationships until you are ready to avoid like a cancer competitive jealousy we're going to read all the scriptures every scripture and give you are going to read it. so media please help us on that wise i'll give you a number of scriptures proverbs 14 verse 30 quickly please then we'll look at 27 verse 4 proverbs 14 and verse 30 the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh are we together read the b part it says but envy or jealousy is what rottenness it has a a disease effect to your bones let me tell you something competitive jealousy destroys you jealousy is like a wound competitive jealousy destroys you Believers are very, very competitive people. Jealous people. You bought this car, I buy it too. You bought this suit, I buy it too. If, if, you know, I'm not just saying it for Koinonia alone, but this is something I've observed. This is one of the reasons why many believers worldwide, especially in the African continent, we are obsessed with the passion to prove points. And so we do not have the patience to allow time and preparation to come to fruition men of god compete with themselves and all kinds of things there there are healthy dimensions of competition when you're speaking from a business perspective and you can challenge yourself and spoil yourself to excellence but the church has a plague of competitive jealousy members koinonia is quiet thank you jesus because that that means that the holy spirit is pounding on this is exactly how result i love you too much and i must teach you this proverbs 27 verse 4 many of us fall sick being envious of people listen very very powerful description look up please it says wrath is cruel that means it's not good don't do it anger is outrageous but compared you know in comparison who is able to stand before envy in other words, envy is worse than anger. Wrath is cruel, 
anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy envious people never get results in their lives they live their lives in bitterness and pain could this be why many of us do not maintain valuable relationships last scripture proverbs 14 verse 30 okay we already have that we read it already proverbs 27 verse 4 we'll just leave those two avoid competitive jealousy say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be patient until the word of god manifests in my life i reject jealousy i cast away jealousy from my life lift your voice and pray in one minute it will sting your ego but brothers and sisters this is god speaking pray the spirit of competitive jealousy I take it away from my life please pray envious of my workers at work envious of my business contemporaries no envy is sin it's not just bad it is sin sin against yourself you depress yourself there are many people that don't sleep in the night this lady was my junior in school she's now married and I'm not married you are envious this person I was the person that that trained this person he's now a millionaire i'm no longer i'm a pastor this is my son it's all those jealousy and envy kill it now lift your voice and pray Shabbatato sekata. in the name of jesus i come against it satan you will not destroy my propensity to quality relationships competitive jealousy god bless you number two very quickly what is the second key to maintaining relationships i was surprised when i was studying this i found out that a, a research was done and it was it was told that one of the top three reasons why relationships do not last is because of evil speaking backbiting and gossip so the second point is avoid gossip backbiting and evil speaking the Bible calls it ill speaking. Statistically, you can go and check it. The top reasons why relationships break. Give us Titus chapter 3 verse 2 please. And then Proverbs chapter 6 will read from verse 16 to 19. Avoid gossip, backbiting, speaking evil. Unfortunately, and with all due respect to the body of Christ, for some reason, the church in Nigeria, I don't know if it's because of our African background, we are experts at gossip, experts at backbiting, experts at speaking evil. To speak evil of no man, are we there? To be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. To speak evil of no man. It is amazing how there is an appetite in people to talk ill and evil of people. There are believers that come to church only to come and find out what is wrong. Are we together? You speak evil of people. We speak evil of our parents. We speak evil of leaders, pastors, business people. We speak evil of our government. We speak evil of anybody. If it is not you, every other person has a problem. You will never maintain good relationships like that. And you will lose out on opportunities for cheap victory. Is God speaking to us? Avoid gossip. Gossip is a great sign of weakness. Gossip is a sign of mediocrity. It's a sign of lack of confidence in yourself. It's a spirit. I'm sorry to say it, and please don't be offended. Most of us, the homes where we grew up from, that's the norm. That's where we got this mindset. Everybody talks about everybody. Gossip. Backbiting. Speaking evil. Proverbs chapter 6, from verse 16 to 19. Proverbs chapter 6. Just write it and look up, I'll read it. These six things does the Lord hate. So God hates it. These six things does the Lord hate. Seven are an abomination unto him. We're reading to 19. Number one, a proud look. 
Number two, a lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Number four, a heart that devised wicked imagination. There is such a heart. Feet that be swift in running into mischief. 19, a false witness that speaketh lies. And the last of them is what? He that soweth discord. It didn't say among men. Among who? You find them in every church and every ministry. Experts are joining the heads of nice people together. Hey, Jimmy, I, I wouldn't have told you, but I've, I've, do you know, have you noticed that every time Koinonia comes, there's a way Pastor Alpha looks at you. <laughs> I will gist you about it later. It's devilish. It's devilish. It's devilish. You are sowing seeds of discord. There are many people who were happy friends until a wrong information came in between them. There are husbands and wives that live in hatred because a third party was introduced. Adam and Eve were living in harmony until there is a third voice. You must be careful. Third voice is ruin quality relationships. How many of you God wanted to lift you until somebody came in with a report and said, sorry, you. how many ladies would have been married now but someone who sows seeds of discord? Sorry, I, I overheard somewhere that you like this lady. Are you, are you blind? I just came to advise you. Are you blind? This lady that has lived like this, she was my neighbor growing up. So it's, it's something I know. Is that how you hate your destiny? And the brother goes back. Be careful because when we pray during miracle services, we pray very wild prayers and tell God to pull those any and everything standing on the way of people's progress. And you must be careful that that's not you. Because the prayer will be answered anyway. Are we together? He that soweth discord. Do you know that gossip can be habitual? Meaning even if there is nothing to say, because you have trained your mind, you will always. You just see somebody pass and say, Ah, let me tell you something. I didn't plan to talk, but no. Don't laugh. Almost everybody is guilty of this. So when it's time to pray, we will cry before God. First for yourself and say, Lord, I'm guilty. I am very, very guilty. Are we together? Yes. Worship team standing to worship. I you see how this guy is standing. That, that's the guy I'm telling you. Hey, you don't know. That guy, I saw him around that area yesterday. He likes the lady. He likes it. What is your business? For heaven's sake, what is your business? Are we together? Yeah. What is your business? Gossip. Backbiting. Ill-spoken words. You just hear that somebody is rising. You say, who? Who is rising? No, I need to do something about it. Don't become like that. Ill-spoken words. The appetite. You see, every time you talk bad about people, I want you to remember that you are destroying God's creation. You must stop it. If put yourself in the shoe of the ones you are destroying. When you tear down people and destroy them. How many people tear down men of God? You don't think about their churches. What happens to their members while you are destroying them? What happens when you are talking ill of a pastor? What happens when you are tearing him down? What happens when you are insulting the pastor's wife? Think of what happens to her reputation. It affects her leadership. We are experts at doing it. It's a habit that I trust that God will break from us. Because many of us, this is what drives friends from us. Come, Pastor Alpha. God brings your destiny helper. He holds your hand. In two weeks, in two weeks, everybody knows everything about you. Ah, I came to Apostle's house. I saw him counting dollars. Don't, don't mind that quietness. Oh, Apostle is rich. You think it's an information you are giving. And God is saying, you see, this person, you are not a candidate for my help. Carry your trouble and go away. And say, ah, but God is going to help me. No. We have destroyed our lives. Destroyed opportunities. How many people would have gotten jobs if they knew how to keep quiet? 
do you know some people so gossip that they gossip even about themselves they have is an obsession if there is nothing to talk about you can even be the person to act the drama yourself i beat my wife i just want you to know honestly and you see listen the thing about gossip and ill speaking please listen this is a lesson for all of us to learn the thing about gossip is it is like lost whoever is the object there is the one you will tell the information to including a child imagine me now coming to talk assuming pastor alpha has a child that is grown but because there is an appetite you are walking in a house and you are now talking kite boy this is your father now you are poisoning the mind of the child what do you think happens now are we together we must repent from the spirit of backbiting and gossip romans chapter 16 verse 17 please give it to us quickly gossip terrible backbiting terrible now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause division and offense is contrary to the doctrine that we have learned do what to them what is the scriptural remedy avoid them avoid them listen hold on let me teach you something be careful when you partner with gossip because very soon the person gossiping will need favor from the one he's talking about and you will be the scapegoat to use and secure that favor a typical example is workers people who work in their profession your boss your superior they come and meet you and say this is our boss said so 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 and so and they gossip when promotion comes what do you think happens you say hey, boss i i just came to appreciate you and to confess something sir let me be honest i've been talking about you you see he has bailed himself abby but sir this is even the milder part of the story the worst one is i'm about to tell you someone else who joined me because he's looking for promotion and all of a sudden a boss that says see me by three o'clock you come back and say pack up your bags because next week you are leaving this company why sir please leave my office seed of discord gossip is cancerous backbiting 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 you must avoid it like a cancer number three the third way to maintain relationships avoid offense avoid offense what is offense the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense offense is a measure of the ease your ease of volatility there are people who get offended you can just look at them and uh -uh it's like this your cloth did you iron it well and they say you are insulting my pedigree what no 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 no. there are people who are volatile the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 talking about love now it says love does not behave itself unseemingly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked or anger if you are truly walking in love i don't care what your background is you will not be easily angered there are people who get angry very easily very easily bros how now you say me i'm 10 years older than you i am please don't think that because me on a very good day wouldn't you be saying money easily offended you see offense is a product of judging things from the lens of your own perception of yourself when you judge things from a faulty perception things will be interpreted from the lens of your own limitation offense refuse to be offended refuse to be offended there will be occasion for offense in every relationship from a marriage relationship a business relationship ministerial relationship you must make up your mind as a choice that the blessings that i seek to receive from the relationships god is bringing in my life is greater than any offense offense destroys 
because you see when you are offended one of the many ways you act is speech and every time you speak with a heart of offense usually the Holy Spirit is not in charge of that conversation you will talk in the flesh you can make statements that you cannot withdraw again many people have lost precious relationships because if they were a little temperous they would have regained it many people have lost business opportunities because of that offense is an advice it's an encouragement the Bible says one of the signs that characterize the end of days is that many shall be offended let me tell you you are not a true human being if you wake up and in 24 hours there is no reason for offense especially if you are a leader people do things that should get me offended every day I do things that should get people offended every day an example is what I'm teaching now are we together now there are things that get people offended you must make up your mind that I will not be offended how many men of God get offended and they can't preach they get offended at home they come and climb the stage and you know that that preaching is a lashing down of something that happened between them and their wives and their children the kind of examples they are giving are not relevant to any other member unless their family so you know that this is a this guy is just talking to his wife or the neighbor or the worker using the pulpit offense makes you small offense makes you cheap offense reduces your worth let me tell you something about offense most of those who offend you or they know they offended you the goal is that their joy is in your reaction most of those who offend offend intentionally but when you grow above it you demonstrate that you are living at a higher level of living after this service now on your way home an angry driver an angry man something will happen that will offend you but you must make up your mind and say satan you're a liar i already see your hand i will not be offended say in the name of jesus i reject offense is god speaking to us number four how do we maintain relationships practice forgiveness practice forgiveness mark chapter 11 verse 25 then ephesians 4 32 please give it to us mark 11 25 practice forgiveness i don't know one relationship including the one of you and god that can thrive without forgiveness it's not god you are forgiving god is forgiving you all the time because there are people who really are angry with god okay i forgive you god let's get back into the relationship and when ye stand praying most prayer warriors miss this let me tell you why there is hardship in people's prayer lives it's not all about demons and when ye stand praying what is the rule forgive comma if ye have ought against any that your father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses it's amazing how we pile up people in our hearts some of us have physical books physical books like police reports where you write this sister jane embarrassment sam laughing at me pastor alpha shouted at me the other day while he was preaching and you write everything protocol department <laughs> their own star 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 they offended me ushers i was falling before everybody and they were watching me i injured myself and you write it down then you leave everything and say father don't you know that i'm human and god says really it's like a small child that begs you for something then you give him and say give back and he refuses that's exactly what we do you can never live in this life without forgiveness what is forgiveness forgiveness is giving forgiveness is giving it is giving pardon and mercy forgiveness a disposition where you are ready to let go even before the offense happens forgiveness forgiveness is a, is a dimension of giving if you are not a forgiver you are not a giver not forgiving is one way of manifesting greed it's not just refusing seed forgiveness 
but let me balance very quickly you don't forgive just to make peace forgiving to make peace is one of the benefits of forgiveness but the primary purpose of forgiveness is to release yourself so you can move forward because there are times the people you forgive are still not ready to receive it let me be very honest and let me balance forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance a willingness to turn away forgiveness is useless to the person you are forgiving if there is no repentance it is useful to you let me show you what offense does um can i use someone sam please come watch this this is what offense does i want to move forward but i think sam is standing my way and so i'm trying to push him will i move forward holding him i'm trying to hold sam i can't move forward myself this is what forgiveness is he can be there not even deserving it but i release him so that i can move forward i can leave him and his trouble there if he accepts that he is wrong and turns then we make peace and we can work together if he refuses i still forgive so that i can move forward let me tell you the most wounded in the refusal to forgive is the offender or the offended the person who was offended is the one who is most wounded it is painful that the person who even offended you is not even aware and plans to do it again because it was a product of mindset so your assignment is to have a disposition where you forgive as a leader people will offend you every day people will do wrong things every day you must forgive hallelujah everybody say i receive grace to forgive say i let go everyone i'm holding in my hand holding people hold them in your heart i will never forgive my mother except ah, i have said my own and you can never receive blessings i will never forgive my father for what my father has done if i have a knife i will kill him by myself and say daddy die i'm the one killing you I will never forgive that person who raped me when I was four years old. I will never forgive that, uh, what they call it now, that brother. He went out with me and broke and scattered my heart. Please forgive so that you can move forward. Forgive so that you can move forward. Turn it into prayer in one minute. Lord, I'm tired of holding people down. I release right now. I let go that boss in the name of Jesus. I release my husband I release my wife I release my co-worker I release my business partner I release the man of God I release my head of department I release my escorts I release the members in my department I release Joshua Selman make sure you pray I release everyone who has offended me because I want to move forward I want to move forward practice forgiveness hallelujah it says and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake forgave us very quickly Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 okay Ephesians 4 verse 32 is there and then give us Luke chapter 6 verse 37 Luke 6 37 let's hurry up Luke 6 37 Luke chapter 6 verse 37 it says judge not and ye shall not be judged in other words every time you judge people you are scheduling seasons for yourself condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven make sure you practice this make sure you practice this number five very quickly how do i mean quality relationships be tolerant be tolerant forgiveness is different from tolerance forgiveness is somebody's shortcomings that he hopefully will adjust from it tolerance is somebody's personality or a default belief system that may not change you have to incorporate it as part of that person's living there are people i wish i would tell you everybody around you will change there are people who will not change so you switch from forgiveness to tolerance you accommodate that limitation in their life factor it and build a system around it is god speaking to us yes I have many friends all kinds of friends and just like me they are very funny people 
everybody has all kinds of attributes the same way i am to them too but it takes tolerance there are some things in me unfortunately may not change tolerance you don't you today i like everybody around me to talk but say i don't talk you don't need forgiveness what do you need tolerance. or you you talk too much i just ask you a question where is where is uh, my trouser you say uh, the other one i didn't ask you about what happened where is my trouser please tolerance your destiny helper may be a talkative if you are tolerant to the talkativeness then you receive the breakthrough everybody in your life cannot be you and cannot be like you if everybody was like me the world would be a terrible place you would think the world would be a nice place no you don't want to know some of the boring aspects of my life this world will be a sad place <laughs> you will only be studying and reading and sleeping what a world I am so happy for people who are not me they add flavor I benefit from the joy of them not being me you must have a high degree of tolerance Colossians chapter 3 please help us 12 and 13 Colossians chapter 3 it's called forbearance you must tolerate people put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering 13 forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave so also do ye forbearing one another you have business partners you need forbearance are we together you are in your office working you need forbearance in a ministry like this you need forbearance everybody cannot be you brothers and sisters learn this oh god change them wonderful prayer but they have their wills if they don't change does that mean you will not move forward tolerance number six the sixth principle for maintaining quality relationships is that you must be a contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved you maintain relationships by being valuable to the relationship you must be a contributor there are parasitic relationships relationships are meant for mutual benefit maybe not equally mutual in, in terms of degree of contribution I cannot be your friend and be at a high level with you when you are not contributing anything in my life no Ejimi is my friend he contributes greatly in my life I contribute greatly in his life so there is a basis for continuity are we together now if you are not valuable to a relationship that relationship's lifespan is very small it will never please hear this this is true for marriage it is true for business it is true for ministry there are many people who complain and say Joshua Selman doesn't want to be my friend doesn't want to be this and I said no no I want to be your friend it's just that I am passionate about value be a contributor money is not the only thing to contribute love kindness godliness are we together now there are so many things to bring into a relationship not everybody's looking for money in a relationship there are people who have conquered that realm. they need love they need value they need understanding they need help you must learn this if you want a guy to come into your life what value are you going to bring as a guy what value are you going to bring even the church and Christ truly speak he doesn't need anything from us but because of his love he limited himself to allow us space to be able to contribute something that's why when we worship and praise him is we 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 we're not necessarily adding anything to him but he has limited himself that way so that he can give us room for expression relationships must be mutually beneficial if there are five people in a business and only two are running that business they are the two who will be the closest of friends the rest will just be freelance people around who will feel angry don't 
be angry in a relationship that you are not bringing quality value. Please, I want us to go back home and think about the reason why our family members do not value us so much. The reason why even in the house of God, it's true that we love everybody unconditionally, but we are not committed to everybody at the same level. It is according to contribution. Say amen. You must be a contributor. If you are helping me spiritually, you will be close to me. If you are helping me financially, you will be close to me. If you are helping me in terms of the love for God, if you are helping me fulfill my assignment, you will be close to me. If you are not doing any of this, I love you, but you can't expect to be close to me. The same way, if I'm not contributing meaningfully to your life, you love me, but I can't be close to you. Relationships are based on contributions. I want you to learn this wanting friends around you to be so committed without anything to bring to the table is flattery brothers and sisters there must be a commitment no matter how little it is it may be prayer it may be love it may be rest sister you may not be educated but you can bring love you can bring patience are we together yes you are the one that when the guy is getting sad he said no calm down it may not be so you are the guy that will say no 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 my dear calm down i know she offended you but take it easy there has to be a contribution you walk with the holy spirit you are rebellious you are disobedient you don't pray no secret place and he say lord why are you not close to me and he says what is all this are you not hearing what the apostle is saying you have to be the mutual contribution give me time i give you more of myself become a contributor to the growth of the relationship number seven so we wrap up for tonight practice genuine love the last key to maintaining quality relationship practice genuine love underline the word genuine there are many people whose relationships are purely based on what i will get in as much as i have spoken about value brothers and sisters if the only basis for relating people is what you will get you are a selfish personality whether as a husband as a wife as a man of god as a member as a worker as a career person as a business person it is not always about what you will get it is about who you are are we together my life will be an ugly life if the only people in my life are just those who can contribute to me no while we were yet sinners unable to contribute anything in due season christ died for us proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 please quickly proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12 hatred stirred up strife but love covers what let me tell you something brothers and sisters it is one proof that the friend you have whether it's a love relationship or any kind of relationship will last when you truly love somebody you will make very legitimate excuses for their weaknesses it will be difficult for you to find reasons to throw people away if you can throw people easily it's a sign that you don't deserve to be close to them love can cover a multitude of sins I see people in relationships, not love, really, all kinds of relationships, and the ease with which they get offended. No, sir. If five people come into your life, not love relationship now necessarily, five people come into your life, none of them can stand two weeks. The problem is you, not them. Are we together? Hatred, stir it up strife, but love covereth. How many sins that means there is nothing anybody does to you that cannot be covered when there is genuine love the secret to peace all kinds john 13 35 john 13 35 then give us first john 4 20 first john 4 20 john 13 35 john 13 verse 35 By this shall how many men all men know that ye are my disciples not if you pray in tongues not if you have a Christian name if ye have love not for God love for one another 
loving God is not necessarily the ultimate proof that you are walking in love because it says that if you love God that you do not see or you don't love your neighbor that you see how can you claim you love God that you see listen brothers and sisters this issue of loving one another is something we must indoctrinate ourselves in I, I have told myself I cannot hate anybody in the house of God no impossible impossible truly speaking I'm not just saying it I live a very peaceful life <laughs> Apostle, why are you angry can you no I've been delivered I live a happy and peaceful life peaceful life very peaceful life very peaceful life by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another do you love people or do you use people you can use people you can use a relationship you can use a wife you can use a husband you can use a boss you can use employees pastors you can use members you can use workers the workers in this ministry know with all humility that i love them with all my heart i love the leaders they know it i'm lavish about it i love them with all my heart how could i ever hate the people that so serve with all their heart this is why some of us never get the anointing this is why many of us never command results our hearts are full of hatred there is always one bad story to say no first john 4 verse 20 and then we round up first john 4 verse 20 god has spoken to us tonight if a man say even if his name is joshua selman if joshua selman says i love god like many christians say and hated his brother he didn't say hated it didn't describe what kind of brother and the offense the brother did it just said if he hated his brother please read on if you're a christian what is he he didn't say he's an angry person and god understands that person is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen how can he love god that he had not seen church we must not only love jesus we must love ourselves more pastors who en we experience levels of the anointing when they switch just from loving god and extend it to loving men any pastor that's why i honor the lord for the ministers around i mean reverend dr tende is here god bless you thank you so much a number of other ministers scattered around every time i see them come visit like this i am very blessed love there are times I pick up my phone and I just send all my pastor friends text messages and I just tell them, how are you? How is the work? The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. There are times that I just do it to my friends. Some of you, you never do it. Say, Has he ever done it to me? You want a harvest of a seed you are not sowing? No, sir. If you had sown that seed, the friend you used to know that is now a great man, you would have maintained a relationship that would have blessed you but when you had privilege the number he had then that you had you did not invest in it and now he has changed his line only those who blessed him have the new line you are not part of them and you are angry and grumbling and say all these pastors i remember when god started helping me a lot of people were offended and say what is all this thing eh? i tried to call apostle he cannot call you call you say protocol he doesn't know me and i say you can imagine two years you have never asked whether god whether koinonia people are eating whether how did you collect offering is god faithful are there demons attacking you can i pray you didn't send any text and then you just hear that god is faithful and you want a prayer request and just call and demand no it's not done that way it's an investment you don't get anything from it when you don't commit to it there are people who don't honor anybody they don't recognize anybody they don't care just call and say look i have bishop oedipo's number see bishop david oedipo let me call and you call he says see all these organ men of god i will not pick if i'm him no sir it's not because i hate you they are busy maintaining the relationships that are interested in them please don't make arrogant demands of attention over relationships you are not willing to commit to a little prayer i'm not talking of money a little prayer man of god how are you sir just to find out mommy how are you daddy how are you pastor how are you it's been three years we've not seen i hope god is doing well god bless you and increase you they are noting it 
even if they don't have time to reply they are not in it the day they see that number there are many numbers i don't have saved but if i see them i know i know that this person cares a lot about the ministry how is koinonia some people are very sarcastic greetings here my name is this these are my problems you just listen bless you and i say what just like that now there are people who only call when they need help sir um just to greet you my mother has come again no, honestly uh, my father has come again no my sister remember the, the thing i told you the other time you don't remember me I, i'm sorry was it last week no i met you june last year now june last year i met you and you are reminding me today no you must invest in relationships you must love brothers and sisters i stand by the integrity of god's word and i tell you this if you practice these things before last koinonia it would have changed your life there are some of you this is what you need this is the revelation you need to enter the next level it's not like the job cannot come there are many people now that admission will start you're going to start disturbing our daddy prof and disturbing a lot of other people sir i remember it's me that sent you cv and says is it because i'm coming for koinonia and you are seeing me like that You've never done anything. You've never said take five for life and all of that. No, 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 no. Sir, the, the, uh, just to let you know that uh, by God's grace, I'll be finishing now. You promised me in 300 level that you'll give me money for, for project. You didn't follow it up, not in prayer, not with wisdom. No. Please learn this. Practice this right now. Call write the list of the top 10 relevant people in your life and start investing in them and watch what happens to you because when a man loves you everything he has loves you too if a millionaire loves you his money loves you too an anointed man loves you his anointing will love you there are anointings that reject people yes i need you to know that satan is determined to frustrate your Christian experience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan is determined. He will use every spiritual arsenal within his control. To see that he frustrates your spiritual life. Therefore it will take understanding. Of the operations of the kingdom. To triumph over him. He said unto thee O Lord do I lift up my soul. Oh my God. He said, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed and let not my enemies triumph over me. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Tonight, he's restoring everything in obedience to Christ. Satan has hindered a lot of people. Listen, we have been explaining these things right from the teaching. Give me this mountain. That every time you arrive at that mountain, there are giants. Hear me? There are forces of darkness stationed across the earth to ensure that men do not rise. Zechariah chapter 1. This is a month of breakthrough. Something must happen in your life. I know that somebody believes this word. There are many who will sit down there and keep being cynical and watch others testify. Said they heard the word like we did, but the word did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. Zechariah 1 from verse 17 down. Cry yet saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, My cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion. The moment it speaks about breakthrough, what happens? Next verse. Can you give us from Amplified? Is it possible? Please, Amplified. Then I lifted up my eyes, and behold, four horns. Immediately he told the prophet, this is your prophetic destiny. 
this is what should happen to you. He said, now lift up your eyes and see what has been hindering you. He said, I lifted up my eyes and I beheld four horns. Amplified says symbols of strength. Next verse. And I said unto the angel who talked with me, what are these? I've not been taught in church that there are horns that can lift people. They have deceived me that you just confess and enter your destiny. This is strange. I've not been taught. What are these? Many of, of you have been deceived that all it takes is just to laugh and you just jump in and enter your destiny. All it takes is to just pack five naira and put an envelope and come and drop it. Or that they pour a little dot of oil. Let me tell you the truth. There is more to the operation of the kingdom than this. He said, what are these? It is strange. I've not been taught. I've no, I wasn't given this insight that after a promise, there is a contention in the spirit to bring its deliverance. Most people just stop in verse 17. He said, now that I've told you your prophetic destiny, lift your eyes, let's tackle the resistance. What is this that you see? If it's raining, let them come in. Please come in. Sit anywhere. On the ground, on the altar, anywhere. Just find a place and sit down. Tonight is a serious meeting and we're going to pray. Listen. And he answered me. He said, these are what? The four horns of powers which have scattered Judas. Rob men of their praise. Rob men of their testimony. Judah means praise. Praise is an effect of a testimony. The well-doing of the Lord. Please come in. Come in everybody. Sit down anywhere. Come and sit here. Wherever you can find, just sit down. There are spaces all around. Ushers, please help them. I need everybody's attention. Are you following me now? He said they have scattered what? Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Tonight we will pray. Oh, that devil that is holding your destiny. See, no matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. Is that true? No matter how mad he is, he can do stupid things and they say he's a madman. But when he sees fire, the Bible says he maketh his angel spirits and his ministers flames. Look up. Every promise in the Bible requires contentions in the spirit for you to actualize it. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy that has been released to you. There are more seats. Stand anywhere. No devil will stop you this night. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your home. Sing it one more time. Yeah. Let hope, let it rise. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Please follow me tonight. It says, Then the Lord showed me what? Four smiths or workmen. One for each enemy of the horn. He showed me four carpenters. He said, now I've shown you the horn. There are certain people I am going to send to you. He calls them carpenters. This is your promise. This is your destiny. Between you and your destiny, there are four horns. And the job of those horns is to scatter your life, scatter your finances, scatter your anointing, scatter your prayer life. He said, but I sent four carpenters. One for each horn. He said, to beat it down, 21. Then said I, what are these horns or smith? So Satan sends his horn. See, let me tell you something. Go to verse 19. He said, these are four horns 
and four powers. Their job is to wreck your destiny. Are you listening to me? They are, they are patient. These are spirit entities scattered around the face of the earth. And every time they see anything that looks like growth and progress in your family, they are the ones, they watch to see when your sister gets pregnant. Their job is to scatter. He said to scatter Judah. Judah is the place of praise. Israel is the place of promise. 21. Then said I, what are these horns coming to do? He says, and he said, these are the horns or powers that scattered Judah so that what? No man will lift his head. There are forces. Hear me, Koinonia. There are forces of darkness positioned by the powers of darkness. He said, wherefore, I desire to come to you, but Satan hindered us. So that no man will lift up his head. They are scattered around our villages. They are scattered around ministries so that certain ministries cannot lift up their heads. So that certain destinies cannot lift up their heads. That's the job. Every time anyone in your family is about to rise, they contend in your academics, in your finance. The moment you begin to pray, after one week your prayer life dies, the horn the moment you have faith and say Lord I trust you after three days something pushes you down are you following me now you enter a relationship two weeks something just happens and scatters everything who are these he said these are four horns they have been stationed and every time they see you lifting your head their job is to bring you down it's in your bible it says so that no man will lift up his head. Many ministries do not know the powers of darkness that try to tie them down. Are you listening to me? The moment a ministry starts blossoming, the men of God are carried away with money and prosperity and increase and ministrations. They forget that there are four horns. Let the Lord just declare a prophecy over your life and you will see these horns rise. The moment they declared, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, all hell broke loose. He said, I desire to give you prosperity. I desire to give you increase. But there are four horns. There are four horns. There are many families represented here. What you are seeing in your dreams and visions and what is happening in your life is different. Between that dream and the manifestation are four horns. They are gates. Are you following me tonight? I came to preach my heart because we are going to pray. Four horns. You go, you go and apply for a job. They are ready to respond to you. Three days later, something comes up without any explanation. See, hear me believers. If you don't take charge of your destiny and apply the keys of the kingdom, you may remain forever. And you will not lift up your hands. Thank you for lifting. 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 My head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. There are many ministers who struggle and struggle. They preach, they suffer, they go and do a lot of publicity. People come and get healed and go. They don't, these are four horns. The moment they pay your father's salary. Everybody in the family starts becoming mysteriously sick without explanation until that one night I finish. You marry a man who was loving and caring. Suddenly he becomes a Dracula. Four horns. Tonight, 
we have come under an apostolic and prophetic atmosphere to confront the gates of darkness are you hearing what i'm saying let me tell you satan can bow are you hearing me satan can bow you must get angry in your spirit don't just sit and watching others forget about what is happening and concentrate there's no space sit around find somewhere and sit tonight when it's time to pray i don't want to see you looking at me pack your wig pack your wivon keep it one side we are going to pray this night hallelujah he said but this smith or workmen have come to what there are men that have been anointed to terrorize this horn are you saying that word he said see he said but this smith these carpenters have come to terrorize the horn he didn't say it's not just to defeat them to terrorize them there are people satan is afraid of see Pastor Jakes made a statement. Look at me. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There is this error in the body. There are two errors. One is the error of saying, see, everybody, I have the same access to God. Are you hearing me? I have the same access to God. There is nothing there. No man of God is special than this. Or the one that men of God make themselves semi-gods. Both are wrong. But let me tell you something clearly this night not every human being is a human being the anointing has changed some people the bible says there are many bodies some are terrestrial some are celestial they may look like you the ability to recognize that difference is what will take you out of certain things are you hearing me we are equal in christ but we are not equal in call and office and anointing you must realize this the Bible says there are some people that have been anointed to terrorize them and cause them to be panic stricken. Look at the horns that are terrorizing others. But the Bible says God calls some people and say, you, I just call you, come and become a terrorist. It's an election of grace. It's in your Bible. This is not error. It's not because they pray more. It is an office. an office to terrorize the works of darkness see let me tell you this night whatever power hear me i'm speaking under the unction of the lord whatever power that is responsible for holding any area of your life except god is not the god of heaven it must give up on you this night i said it must give up on you this night i don't care I speak under a prophetic and apostolic unction as one of these privileged carpenters. If I be sent of God, I speak to you. Every horn that is responsible for terrorizing your life, it will bow this night. He said, but I have sent carpenters. They are around, scattered over the earth. The only problem is that we have not trained our spirits to recognize them. Jesus went to certain cities, they saw him until he ascended to heaven. And they said, is this the man that has been among us? See, let me tell you, one of the greatest revelations you have in this life is that some people have been called. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's called an election of grace. I didn't call myself. See, let me tell you something. When the Lord showed me the vision for ministry, hear me. I was standing in a tower and I saw an endless sea of people very oppressed people messed up by satan it was a whole generation of people and i saw them crying 
And while they came close, I was hearing the sounds of their cry. And they were blaming me in the vision. And I said, what is wrong? And they said, there is no food and no water. Suddenly, it occurred to me that I was holding in my hands the keys to the storehouse that will feed that generation. This is a vision I had. Listen to me, please. Hallelujah. And when that happened, I told them who is the cause. Who is the reason why you are the way you are? And they said you are the one. Suddenly, compassion fell on me. And I said, I'm going to come out right now. I, I got to that tower. I was trying to hide from somebody. That was when I looked through the mirror and I saw that thing. It was fear and timidity that made me to run like Gideon to go and hide in the vision. But the people were telling me that we are dying here and you are the one who is holding the keys to the storehouse. They said no food and no water. These two things. Hallelujah. And I was determined that I was going to go out. The moment I opened the door, because I was afraid that I was alone. When I opened the door, there was a giant person that stood and he said, hold my hands. We will go together. He's called the Holy Spirit. This is the whole idea behind the things we do with the Holy Spirit. People have criticized that we are emphasizing the... See, let me tell you, every great vision comes under fire and criticism because people do not understand. The Bible says they know not. I'm taking time to explain to you. This call, there are people who have been called as carpenters. You may die in a place without recognizing because you see everybody and you think they are celestial or they are terrestrial. There are some people that certain graces have elected them. Hallelujah. In one other vision, I was in a whole city and I found out that all the hospitals and the clinics were closed. And I was crying because there were people that were sick. I said, what is all this? What is going on here? And I had a voice. He said, go and heal them. That was the end. So when people hear that HIV positive is changing to negative, or when people hear that genotypes are changing, rather than finding out, they keep criticizing and castigating. We don't announce any miracle here without verification. He said, but these smiths or these workmen have been sent to terrorize these homes. That's why their lives are not normal. They are not normal human beings. They don't live like normal human beings. Hallelujah. Many of you do not know the burden of carrying a prophetic agenda for a generation. It will change you. I don't have a social life. I have lost many things that many people have. You do not know what it means to come under the influence of a divine mandate. I see a lot of people jumping and smiling. I'm apostle, I'm prophet. I want to open ministry and I say, oh dear. Day and night you are under fire of all sorts. But he that endures to the end. Hallelujah. He said to cast out the horns or powers of the nations who have lifted their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. There are horns, brothers and sisters, that are responsible for the way your father behaves, for the way your mother behaves, for the way your loved ones behave. You have tried counseling. You have tried psychology. It didn't work. They are called horns. But the Bible says, my head has thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn and you have anointed me with fresh oil. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more scripture. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Corinthians 6 verse 9. Are you there? 
What did I say? 16, I'm sorry. 16, verse 9. Let's read together. It's projected. One to read. One to read it again. For a great door and effectual is opened up to me. And there are many. A great door is opened. The door of marriage has been opened. The door of healing has been opened. He said, but there are how many? But the Bible says, I have set before you an open door. He said, no man can shut it. And there are carpenters that have been sent to enforce that thing. Do you know what? Let me tell you something. We are not the only carpenters. You are here because you are one of those carpenters too. This is our mission. Our mission is not to become great men of God, but to make you a terrorist in the kingdom of darkness. See, it is not everyone, hear me, that is afraid of Satan. Are you hearing me? It's not everyone that is afraid of death. It's not everyone that is afraid of sickness. Some people have seen how cheap Satan is and he's aware. Hallelujah. That knowledge comes through an understanding of the operation of the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. There are many people who do not know. Listen, I want to tell you something. If you do not know the laws that govern the kingdom, it can be costly. Are you hearing me? Longevity is not a mistake. Longevity is not a product of going to church. There are kingdom principles that bring forth longevity. Divine health is not a mistake. Divine health is not a product of the anointing. Divine health is from the body of Jesus. Are you hearing me? Anointing comes to get away the demon spirits that are responsible for bringing that. He said by his stripes. He didn't say by the oil. We have misapplied a lot of spiritual laws. Authority against witches and wizards is not the issue of uh uh. There are kingdom principles, and this is what we seek to share. Greatness does not happen by magic. Many of you are asking, why is the devil disturbing me? Are you still asking that question? When Satan followed Jesus to the wilderness, was patient for one month and ten days until Jesus finished fasting. What makes you think that the devil will just look at you and say, oh, I understand you are anointed. But it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to look at the devil eyeball to eyeball and say, I am one of those carpenters. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are some of you who don't sleep. When you close your eyes, you are oppressed. I was one of those people. The Bible says, a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. Tonight we have come to call the devil a liar. I've come to speak to you that there is an authority. There are seven things that redemption brings unto men. All of them must be at work in your life. The Bible says, worthy is the lamb to receive blessings, riches, honor. These are all the things he has received and he has given you. Seven. And it must be at work in your life. Hallelujah. Who are these horns? Who are these horns that have stood against little children? Who are these horns? You are aware of the testimony of the man who came here and who was healed, I think during one of the services or thereabout. He was sleeping in the night. Somebody appeared to him in a dream. Remember the story? With big syringe, injected this man with HIV virus and he woke up physically with the virus. That devil is a liar on now years ago I used to pray for barren people and they were not healed 
they didn't give birth it disturbed me and i went back i said lord what what is it then the lord told me barrenness is not sickness it's an oppression it doesn't require healing there is a spirit the spirits come and they create what we call fibroid fibroid is the baby of these spirits in the womb of people That's why women have miscarriages in the night. Why don't they have miscarriages in the daytime? But you are carpenters. See, I look forward to testimonies. Where will he, somebody will say, Ah, I heal the sick and I raise the dead. Not Pastor Jakes did this. Ah, uh -uh. you be the carpenter. You are not falling down for nothing. You are not falling down to prove we are anointed. God is in a serious business of working on you. Say, I'm one of the carpenters. Say it, I'm one of the carpenters. Yes, financial carpenters. Apostolic carpenters. One of my life's goal is to break the back of poverty in the church. It's one of it. I hate the effect of poverty on many families. More ladies have entered prostitution. They didn't come to meet you. How much do you have? Many people have been messed up. There are some of you now. You want to marry. But you cannot get married. Because of the finance. And some of you are hoping that one day. I will get a job of 10,000 and then I will get married. Calculate it by your do you to judge. But when those that God has sent to bless you, they can come in one day. He said, Your gates shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Do you believe this? You are going to get angry this night. This night, we are going to pray. I'm just sharing with you scriptures. The Bible says Daniel in chapter 10. Remember how that Daniel was praying and fasting. Wanting to get an understanding. And the Bible says the moment is there from the very first day. Daniel 10. You start reading from verse 5 down to 11 verse 1. When he was coming, the Bible says the prince of Persia withstood the angel 20 and one day. The prince of Persia withstood him. Hallelujah. The prince of Persia withstood him. Until he kept praying. The moment that embargo was lifted, the angel said, now I am come to give thee understanding. One of the chief princes came to hell. Tonight there is divine backing of the angelic. As we pray, there will be things happening in the realm of the spirit. Yokes of darkness that will be broken. This is pre-miracle service. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain. That's what God will do tonight. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Sing it one more time. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus 
to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. I've shared it here. Before we would start Koinonia, listen, I realize that there is a secret to increase and growth. And I knew that there were powers over territory that kept ministries down. I've shared this again. From the roundabout of Chicken Republic, I started walking there till aviation, commanding the forces to bow. Commanding principalities and power. And then the city opens up. Before I go for administration in any city, I speak to the principalities. They know my voice. See, let me teach you something. There are principalities. There are powers. There are rulers. There are spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. These are different strata of, of darkness. But the Bible says you have been exalted above thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. Both in this realm, this world, and in the world to come. So you command them to bow. Hallelujah. As our prayer department begins to pray, they speak over the week and an open heavens and you are there in your house. You don't even know what carries you from your house. You are still complaining and insulting us yet you are coming because the heavens are open. There's an army rising up. You are that prophetic army. There's an army Rising up, I tell you, you are that army. There's an army rising up to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Tonight, every one of you is going to represent not just yourself, but even your families. Hear me. Your families have been praying for a savior. Say, we can't die like this. And God said, come for koinonia. You, you, let God find a carpenter. Hallelujah. I just came, today I just came, I've been at home. I needed to go and visit the house. As soon as I stepped in, in the night, that night as I slept, in a dream, the Lord showed me everything that was wrong. And I got up the next day while they were sleeping. Hallelujah. I got anointing oil, poured it inside water, and carried the bucket. I took my bare foot and I was walking around. And I was commanding the forces in that territory to bow. I said, An ambassador is in town. This is what we are teaching you. Hallelujah. An ambassador is in town. I went and looked at my mother's poultry. I said, I command increase. See, if you know the office that you stand in in Christ, you will not take it for granted. The Bible says, as I hear you say before my ears, so will I do. Realize you are not ordinary. You are not the one looking for help. And if there is any need for help, we will grant you the help here by the grace of God and empower you to go back. When you see things that are not working, rejoice because you are here. You carry the backing of heaven. Your job is to legislate. Your job is to legislate. The Bible says he confirmed the words of his messengers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord ambassador you must realize this so that you don't just stand at home or in your offices everything that is going wrong start blaming yourself and say now everybody's lamenting if there is nobody i am an ambassador say it i'm an ambassador I'm an ambassador this is why god is bringing you and you are going to pray as you pray first for yourself and then through the fire of the Holy Ghost, you will dislodge powers over your life 
and then you will see testimonies rolling in suddenly you will find out that certain insights you have been struggling to get suddenly there is an open heaven your ministry or your fellowship takes another level as if satan does not exist hallelujah nobody ever came to jesus christ hear me after he went 40 days and 40 nights satan came to withstand him because jesus wanted to come to the people like paul but satan withstood him when he defeated satan suddenly on the mountain people started coming along the water side people said, what happened powers were dislodged this night hear me you are not praying for healing you are confronting the gates of darkness rise up on your feet everybody rise up on your feet listen 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 i want you to know that heaven is backing you tonight are you hearing what i'm saying say heaven is backing me say it heaven is backing me because we are going to pray now and by the power of the holy spirit i tell you there will be an eruption of testimonies after this night's meeting you will know that the things that have been happening around your life and your family they are not as ordinary as they look you are the holy ghost holy ghost holy ghost you are the holy ghost take your place take your place number one hallelujah you are going to pray and say in the name of Jesus I confront gates that are stopping the finances the finances grace that are making your family members not to be titers grace that are making them not to be givers lift your voice Financial days. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please hold on. This prayer must be serious this night. Please let's have two of our school of ministry students, two prayer band. Benga, come. Kenny, come. Go on one of the mic. Our school of ministry students, where are you? Are you not? Tolu, come. Quickly, two, three. Well, you, it's okay. You push, go and share the mic. Stand behind. When I say pray, if you are not praying, you will go back to your seat. You are not out for jamboree. We are going to pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Four horns. There are four prayer points we have. The Bible says they were sent to one. This finance thing, you are going to pray it. Lift your voice and pray. Let's go, 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 let's go
that will enter into a man's life and, and spoil the good except he first find the strong man. He said, and I will give you the keys of it. Hallelujah. Hear me. Many of us will be surprised what will happen this night. Prayer point number two. You are going to declare and say, Satan, the Bible says through the greatness of thy power, right now, I command those forces bow. Lift your voice and pray. Bow. Bow. Principalities bow. Oh, we 
says when you catch a thief listen please when a thief steals your property and you catch that thief he won't bring back what he stole he said he will restore sevenfold this is what the bible says sevenfold you're going to pray see listen the lord is showing me in i'm in a vision right now he's and the lord is showing me angels holding baskets hear me but the baskets are empty. Listen, Say good. please follow me. <laughs> there is a prophetic atmosphere here. There are empty baskets. And I'm wondering, and the Lord is ministering to me. He's saying this basket will be full of the blessings that are due God's people. See, si hear me. Si he said, and I will restore. Si hear me. Canker worms can si eat years si of people's si life. So you are growing older. But nothing is happening. But this night, hey! I don't know about you, but I came to Koinonia. I'm placing a demand. Everything hey! you know, Satan took. I'd like you to call it back and say, Restore.
Restore. The Holy Ghost just ministered something Restore. to me. We are still praying on the third point. Restore. The Lord said, Restore. we should call back opportunities Restore. that were either missed or wasted. Restore. Are you hearing me? There are some of you, some circles came into your life. Restore. Either by carelessness it passed. Let me tell you, Restore. it's only in this realm that you count time. In the realm of the spirit, you can call time back. Hear me? I don't care what opportunity you missed. Restore. Whether it was an opportunity for marriage, Restore. for job, Restore. right now, I want you to call back Restore. that opportunity. It will come back. Yes. powerless satan is until you engage in prayer satan will keep opening his eyes until you pray when you pray the devil will shrink and you see how powerless he is hallelujah now one last prayer point we'll add one more you are going to confront the gates over your family see don't let anybody fool you that there are no gates let me tell you something some of you are the last card that god has to use over your family if you don't do anything about it don't think god brought you here just to waste your time listen see me listen listen if you truly love your family members effectual prayer is not just by shouting it is the seriousness Put your heart in this prayer. Many of you, as you pray, you will begin to see vision. See, hear me. Listen, let me tell you something. Listen, listen. Uh, see, we don't kill people in this place. But let me tell you, God is a God of mercy, but he's a God of judgment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are certain horns we don't care who these horns are unfortunately sometimes as this power is taking some human beings become victims we don't kill people but whatever it will take for the glory of your family to rise you will pray it is not lift your voice Oh, my God. 
I will not let you go. And the Bible says, when he touched his thigh, he said, What is your name? He said, Jacob, which means a cheat and a supplanter. He said, You are called Israel, for as a prince, you have fought with God and prevailed. And the Bible says, Jeremy, he says, And the sun rose, and he called that place Peniel. Hallelujah. I've told you as much, hear me. I've told you as much as possible. Please invite your loved ones for the miracle service. You don't hear me talk like this. We are only responding to the things that the Holy Spirit, if they refuse, no problem. For God will do a work in this place. Hallelujah. We'll take one more prayer point. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for this ministry. Hear me. I'm like a pregnant woman right now. Because I know when we step into seasons. God has his way. In the last three to four months. That's why you find out that you don't find me outside. I have been praying and preparing birthing new and mighty things in the spirit. We are stepping into a dimension. See, for when you are faithful with what God gives you, he said he measured a thousand cubits and it was to the ankle. And when he saw that you were faithful, he measured a thousand cubits. Many of you are already sensing that there are newer levels of grace. You can see that the unction upon the house is not what it used to be. Yes. This is ushering season. Oh, For when God wants to bless you, He will first increase the anointing, then enlarge your sphere of influence. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made. Hallelujah. You love this ministry i like you in the next few minutes to pray your life out listen you're going to pray for the ministers see the way ministers are falling around like leaves immorality all kinds of things i've said it any man can fall from any height are you hearing what i'm saying and if you love us pray for us pray for us we are going to pray for this ministry. We are going to say, Lord, let a dimension of grace, hear me, hear the prayer point, and fire spread from this place and around this nation. God is already doing great things through our teachings. I cannot describe to you what is happening around. The media can tell you best the mighty and terrible things that God is doing. Some of you have gone back and you have become mighty agents of change. Even you, you are surprised at yourself. This is what we are training you to become. And hear me, when you are praying for the ministry, you are praying for yourself. The ministry is not Joshua Selman. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to say, Lord, together, 
as a family. Nobody will rise and leave another. Are you hearing me? There will not be a few men of God rising, growing in grace. Hear me? There are certain things God has given us as a ministry. Number one is the presence of God. Number two is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The love of God. God has given us influence. God has given us prosperity. We are going to pray that the strongholds that attempt to raise their heads, listen, there will never come a time where we will not have testimonies here. The vision must speak. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to command and say every force that will want to stop the vision from speaking, it will speak in your own life. It will speak. If truly God has called us, something should come upon your life that you will become a peasant of the vision. Lift your voice and pray for ear. <laughs> of the ministry our school of ministry God is raising mighty mighty men of power in all spheres not just ministry you are going to pray for our students you are going to pray for the missions hallelujah you are going to pray for koinonia you are going to pray for all of the things that we are doing you are going to say Lord not one sick body will come and not be healed not one oppressed person you're going to pray for grace to stand criticism grace to stand persecution grace to remain faithful grace to remain faithful grace to remain humble
Hallelujah. I want to do something prophetic this night. Hallelujah. One of the things God has given us is the spirit of dominion. You know what dominion is? Dominion means to legislate the counsel of God in any sphere, if Satan notwithstanding. And among the many things that will happen to you tonight, I'm going to pray for you. That everything we stand for, your life must represent it. See, if you do not represent what we stand for, we are fake. It means we are lying. It means we are faking power somewhere. If we are healing the sick, you should heal the sick. You must not be in ministry. If we are humble and you are arrogant, there is something wrong with the transference of spirits. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. I want you to believe, my brothers. Believe. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Please be careful with the fans. Father, you didn't send us to waste people's time. You didn't send us to be noisemakers. My God, I am praying this night. Every power, every force against any area of your life, this night, if I be sent as a servant of God, if God has ordained us as one of these carpenters, I pray right now, those powers bow. 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 Every power hindering your marriage in this place, Jeremy, or the marriage of your loved ones, this night, I release you in the name of Jesus. Everything stopping your breakthrough. Breakthrough. As surely as the God of heaven lives. Between this night and next Friday, I command unbelievable breakthrough. Receive it. Receive it. I invoke it from the heavens with the backing of Elohim. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Every close heaven in this place, whether it's as a result of non-tithing or mistakes or whatever, I don't care what is responsible. Every heaven that is closed in this place, right now, this night, I pray, let the heavens be open over you. Let the heavens be open over you. Let the heavens be open over you. Hallelujah. This month, there are three things I'm speaking into your life now. Listen. Number one is authentic unction. Listen. Number two is favor that you cannot imagine listen number three is honor receive these three four blessings receive it receive power power to heal the sick power to cast out devil hear me 
in the name that is above all names whatever bows to us here let it bow to you in the name of the lord jesus whatever answers to us let it answer to you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah I want to pray for your family. Super. Hear me, enough is enough this Super. night. Lift your hands. Super. Super. Your families will never believe you or the God you serve until there is an evidence. I pray, my God, that evidence of breakthrough that will compel families to know that you are at work. Let there be a release now. Let there be a release now. Let the angel of the Lord go across every state, every city. I instruct it. Every city. Saria, Abuja, Lagos, Calabar, Kogi State, just angels in the name of Jesus. Go and confirm breakthroughs. Go and confirm breakthroughs. Go and confirm breakthroughs. Give testimonies. 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 So that they will know that your God is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is instructing me to do something dangerous. Please take off your shoes and stand on your feet. This is not diabolic, please. Don't go and start criticizing us and talking nonsense. Listen. Something will come upon your life this night. Please listen. Listen. I don't do stupid things just because people are doing I don't have money. The Bible says, hear me. It says, anywhere the sole of your feet treads upon, it has been given to you. I want to pray, hear me. Many of you do not know the mystery of what is happening. But I want you to believe. You will be amazed. Because I see an angel of the Lord, pure red from head to toe. Never seen, listen, I've never seen this angel of the Lord. And this is what he was telling me. That there is an impartation and a transference. Hear me. The influence we enjoy as a ministry is not a mistake. Are you hearing me? God has honored us and taken us to where we cannot merit. I want it to come upon your life this night. Lift your hands. Many of you will receive mighty impartations. Hear me. You will see things answering. See, your Christianity will have results. Father, I stand as your servant tonight. Under the instruction that you have given me. My God, there is a spirit upon this ministry. An operation of the Holy Ghost. The operation of dominion. An inexplainable influence. At the count of three. My God, let every feet upon this ground receive that anointing and demonstrate it practically. Thank you, Father. One, two, three. Receive it. Take 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 it. Receive it. The spirit of communion. The action of kingdom influence. Let the day, 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 let the day
Aleluya. One more prayer. God has given us inexplainable kingdom wealth and prosperity. Please lift your hands. You need it. I honestly want to pray from my heart that your financial heavens will be open in a way and I'm going to pray my God and my King I pray in the name that is above all names you have called and you have sent me Lord if I be your servant at the count of three let an unction of inexplainable wealth let it come upon your people at the count of three one, two, three. Take it, take it, take it, take it. A mantle of prosperity, a mantle of wealth, a mantle of finance. Do, do mighty things for the kingdom. the hungry, to clothe the poor, to wipe the tears from your family. Let this anointing bring you ideas. Let it bring you opportunities. I see a mighty open heavens. Mighty, mighty open heavens. Jesus, we give you thanks. Jesus, we give you thanks. You have not called the seed of Jacob to seek you again. Give him thanks. I assure you, as surely as the Lord lives, your testimonies begin right now. Anyone under the sound of my voice who is sick in your body, whether blood disease, fibroid, lump in your breast, in the name that is above all names, we change genotypes now. SS be changed to AA now. AS be changed to AA now. Migraine headaches go in the name of Jesus. Demonic manifestations go now in the name of Jesus. Lump in the breast disappear now. Appendicitis go now. Every kind of infirmity. If it has a name, I command it to bow now. You will return with testimonies. HIV be healed now. Every dead virus, every virus that brings death in your body, I curse it, it dies now. Hepatitis A, B, and C go forever now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hear me. I want to give some people an opportunity right now to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. The number one vision that we have, please keep standing. Don't sit down yet. Please, please. I know you've tried. We need to make this great call. 
the Bible says, And they that be wise shall shine like the firmament of the heavens. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. I want to give you an opportunity right now. There are many of you, some of you are coming for the first time. Some of you have been coming, but you have never made a genuine decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, it all starts with a decision to come back home. We do not condemn you. It doesn't matter what you have done. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord, but you have found yourself derailing in a path that is not of God. Right now, it's our joy to welcome you home and for you to start an authentic Christian journey that will produce results. God desires to make you an ambassador. Some of you, your coming out is going to begin to be the beginning of salvation in your family. Right now, while everybody is standing, I want you to leave your seat and begin to come right now. Those who need to rededicate their hearts and those who are giving their lives. Don't wait for anybody to come. You are the first to come. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Come and stand. God bless you. Young, old, come and stand. Don't be emotional about it. This is a very serious decision. God bless you. Come from everywhere. Outside, inside. Please, don't let the devil take advantage of your life. Don't let the devil take advantage of your life. God is giving you an opportunity to make a lasting decision. Leave your seat. Don't allow your friend or your family member come and stop you. Thank you, Jesus. If you are still coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't let the devil tell you it's too late. Keep coming. Keep coming. Tonight is the night for an authentic decision. Tonight is the night for an authentic decision. Don't be afraid of anybody. Don't be ashamed of anybody. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as many who come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Some of you are making the decision for the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time. Some of you are born again. You love God. But you found yourself derailing and you want to mean business with God tonight. It doesn't matter which of the groups. I want to welcome you. We're a family here. We love you. We believe in your future and what God has to do in your life. Hallelujah. God brought you here because he wants to give you a new beginning. Lift your right hand and say this prayer after me from the depths of your heart. It's not a special number. Mean it from your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I come before you tonight, unable to help myself. I have heard your word, and this night, I make Jesus Lord of my life. Forgive me my sins. I receive remission of sins. I receive eternal life into my spirit. From today, I'm saved. I'm a child of God. Holy Spirit, come and fill me. Build me. Make me an ambassador for the kingdom. Empower me to live the victorious Christian life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I salute you for making this great decision. This is the greatest miracle that has happened in this place. Now you'll be having a word with Pastor Jakes. He's going to be meeting with you personally. He'll be following you up. Please and please, as much as possible, I want you to be part of... I want you to be part of this and make sure that you show up Wednesday by 4. Please, tomorrow by 4, you have a meeting with Pastor Jakes. The venue is at the Chapel of Redemption, just the book stand closed. Please, those of you who invited them, remind them and let them come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord increase you. The Lord bless you. Please follow the ushers. They will have your details. God bless you. Appreciate them. Just follow the ushers. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. In a few minutes, we'll be out of here. This is your first time of worshiping with us in Koinonia. We love you. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. We want to honor you. Please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come out gloriously and honorably. We want to pray for you. God bless you. Please leave your seat. Wherever you are, inside or outside, if there's a new person who is sitting, push the person and tell him, I love you too much. I love you too much. 
Hallelujah. Keep clapping, Koinonia. This is not your best. Thank you. The Lord brought them. For those of you who have made it a point of duty to invite people to get blessed, may the Lord invite your destiny help us into your life again and again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. We celebrate you. The Lord honor and increase you. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. I believe you are blessed tonight. You will go back with unending testimonies. You will be amazed. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will bless you. We want to pray and prophesy into your life. We are anointed people. And whatever we call you, you become. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Saints of God, stretch your hands and speak those words. You are anointed. Every word you speak. The Bible says, whatsoever name Adam called them, that was the name they were. Go ahead and prophesy. Declare. We call you blessed. We bless you with a hunger for the spirit. We bless you with a hunger for prayer and the word of God. We pray that the Lord will equip you and make you a giant in the spirit. Every habit, every thing that does not represent Christ in your life leaves you right now. You return as a sign and a wonder. Things will begin to fall in their place in your life. You will become a testimony even to yourself. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Thank you once again. We love you. We honor you. Please just follow the ushers. They will greet you more warmly on our behalf. And they will give you a few informations. God bless you. Please just turn back. You have the ushers. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life. That even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.